Oh, yeah. There we are. Look at that. <laughs> we there. Look at that. This wow. is good. this is going to be interesting, you know? I I'm I'm looking forward to this, man. And we got a few people in the chat already, so say what's up. All say right. what's if if you're a big fan of the Pitch Doctor, say what's up to Brendan. Say uh give, give me a little doctor. little little Pitch Doc uh reference here. And uh I got to tell you Brendan, one of my favorite things is yes, your breakdowns, but like just the genuine excitement when you found out that Tommy Hotovy knew who you were, like that, that was fun to watch. <laughs> That's that was crazy. That was crazy. Cause I was, cause I had to do a, uh, like a pre recorded question. And so I'm watching his like, you know, interview with CHGO. Yeah. While I'm at work, I got my headphones in and he drops my name. I almost passed out, almost had like a little <laughs> bit of a seizure at work. I thought this is unbelievable. So uh, that was that was pretty cool. That's the fun thing about doing these uh, different episodes and this content is sometimes you get surprised, you know? Hey, you know what? That is the feeling that I got when you and Corey mentioned me on CHO. That was my first shout on CHO. And Ooh, and like I knew you, but I did I didn't know Corey yet. And I was like, oh, all the warm and fuzzies right now. <laughs> and that was unprompted. Yeah. Now, Corey just found you, you know, because you were making good stuff and you know, that's what happens, Kyle. That's uh, what happens. Well, we're we're excited for all of you. I see a bunch of people in the chat here. Kyle Lawson. We got Cubs comment section. What's up, boys? What's uh, up, we guys? got Goof, Goofy Goober. Yeah, Goofy Goober. You know, we go. you, know you know what's funny about that? Did you yeah. ever use uh, AOL Instant Messenger back in the day? Oh, of course. That was my screen name. Goofy Goober? <laughs> yeah. And so this guy's got it? Is this me from like 20 years ago? It might be, you know, maybe I'm traveling back in time, hyping myself up. He's reaching out to you. Hey guys, as we're waiting, I just want to say cheers. First of all, both the Cali boys coming at you. So I got to have the Cali squeeze. That have you ever had this cool. beer, Brennan? No, I never had that. Looks oh, bro. Though. Cali squeeze. So I got introduced to this in Cayucas, California, right next to Morro okay. Bay. Okay. And it's amazing. It's a blood orange. So that's my drink of choice. Ooh. So, and you've got scotch going, right? Listen, man, I'm preparing for either the best or the worst. So if they start pitching bad, we have a short game. I'm prepared. Either way, we're going to have a good night. We're going to have a great night. And I, what I am I excited, to, what, have, what is it called? It's Aberfeldy, you know? Listen, you, you sound like that's something you frequent with the way that you just pronounce that. Well, I guess I'm hiding it pretty well. I was telling you off air. <laughs> I'm not a big scotch guy, but I got this as a gift. It's pretty, I think it's pretty expensive, but I have no beer. I have no wine. We're going with scotch. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, uh, as we're waiting for first pitch here, they're announcing the lineups right now. Just want to let you know to sync everything up, guys. If you're watching on Apple TV, as you should be. Uh, right now, the lineup is up for the Chicago Cubs. That's what I'm seeing right now. So make sure that you're on the same page. And also make sure that you are caught up at what we're doing with our drinking game. This is going to be fun. All right, Cubs drinking game. Here we go. Oh, Your drink of choice. As I mentioned, I've got my, my Cali squeeze and Brennan's got his scotch. My scotch. One sip, one sip when the Cubs okay. get a hit. One sip when the Cubs K a batter, not when the Cubs get K'd. We're not, we're, we're unsipping for that. Uh, then two sips for when the Cubs score. And when, when the Cubs win, we're finishing whatever we got left in our drink. All right. We're blacking out on air. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's, <laughs> Let's do it, go. man. Let's go. Oh, uh, bro. Well, hey, uh, I'm going to just keep on throwing comments up from everyone as we keep going because we got a pretty full room right now. I'm excited. Ian Happ is about to lead off. So, once again, just to sync things up, I got Ian Hap taking on and off the gloves right now. He's got the bat. He's walking up, and we're about to hit game one of the Seattle Mariners series. I'm pretty sure we're synced up. So I think so. I there think we so. We'll see. Have if you, you ever start been to I've never been. I've, I've always been wanted either. to go. It looks Me beautiful. Too, man. It's Me one too. of those stadiums that have good. aged pretty well. Oh, he's trying to go 2018 on us and hit a jack in the first Oof. bit. He did that on the opening night too. That didn't work out too well. I mean, 96 mile per hour fastball up and in, you know, right in the happy zone. So, okay. Got his pitch. 
whether yep. it's the first pitch or three, four or five pitches in, that's his pitch. I just realized I got to open up my game day because I'll be honest, man. I don't know, like, even five players on the Mariners. They got an interesting team. I'm pretty jealous of their pitching staff. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, that's that's something we can talk about here in a little bit. I mean, they're coming off some uh, a, a bad start here. And I know you've talked a lot about some of their starting pitchers and wanting to get them on the team. Logan Gilbert, I think, is one of them. Like Logan Gilbert, uh, even who we're watching right now, Bryce Miller is pretty interesting, 25 years old, has spectacular command. We're talking about a walk per nine under two. And so this is going to be yeah. one of those games where the Cubs may want to be aggressive, attack the zone, even with Saya right now is up 2-0, and but probably looking for that fastball right there. And they may want to jump out. Oh, that's, that's what I love about Saya this year, man. I mean, he, ever since August of last year, too, right? Like, I think I'm like he, two seconds behind you. I mean, okay. three wide, it's two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he's, I mean, he's he's taking hacks. He's aggressive now. Like that was kind of the yeah. big turning point for him last year. Was he got aggressive on first pitch strikes? Yeah. Whereas before, he was just kind of taking those. I mean, right after um, ooh, 96 in on the hands, but after he had that brief, what was it? Like two, three, four game. Um, spell from Ross on the bench. He came back and the aggression immediately went up, which was interesting from him. One of David Ross's really smart moves. There you go. And he was Man. rewarded for it. Ah, I didn't look yeah. good. Read like, 202 86. He has nasty stuff, you know, heartbreaking. Yeah. Pitch. So I like I like what Jake has to say here. Bryce Miller for Jose Quas. I say that's a fair trade. I'll do it. You know, you want to call up uh, the Mariners front office, get it done, be my guest. <laughs> so what do we got here yeah so i mean if you like splitters too he throws a splitter one every four pitches so he's your classical hard slider um splitter guy with some good heat i just did a video with lance rosdowski about the splitter did you check that one out yeah i did lance is all over the splitter all over it and i've I've been encouraged about uh, Daniel Palencia's splitter. I've seen it a few times while he's been in there. He threw in his spring training. I'm like, well, what is that? So yeah. the intention to add another pitch is interesting. Last year, he he there was a stretch where he was only throwing like fastballs. Like he threw like I think 12 straight fastballs in one game. Kind of lost that feel for a slider. So it just increased the odds of finding feel for different pitches, and the splitter seems like one of them. Yeah. Oof. 95 up. I don't know what the updated stats are, but I last game threw up a stat about Bellinger. He's batting like probably now sub 100 with the bases empty. Oh, is that true? Bad. It's bad. <laughs> Apparently, he only likes hitting with Ooh. guys on. 96 inside. This is going to be an interesting outing. You like those uniforms from Seattle? I do. I really do. What about you? Black pants. I don't know how I feel about it's, the black pants. I, I like the tops for sure. The black pants is a go, belly. interesting choice. I, I feel I wore black pants when I was in like third grade little week. So that's what that reminds me. Of. <laughs> I don't think I've ever wore black pants. Well, you know, you never experienced life, Kyle. It's true. There's I so much red to on. I had red jerseys and black pants. Wow. I know. The Pretty red cool Raiders outfit. right there. Basically, basically. Yeah, up, in, up until this last game in, in San Diego, everyone except for Bellinger was hot, and a lot of guys just cooled down that last game. Baseball I mean, he's, is he's good. Baseball is going to ruin your life at least a few times per year. So just when you think you're feeling good, it's going to come right back around and hit you in the face. Let's see. Uh, you and I were texting about that. We just put way too much of our psychological energy into baseball. Well, I saw your video about like, you know, yeah. I think it was the Jets dude, you know, who had that jersey made by his mom and everything. Like, oh, that's the difference between, you know, being an addict and being a diehard fan. I'm like, yeah, that's basically it. You have those like hyper emotional young experiences that just lock you in and they never let you go. It is not your choice. Completely out of our control, right? 
<laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. Well, what's, yeah, I got, what's your story? How did you become a Cubs fan? Uh, it's, it sounds very similar to most Cubs fans my age. Grandfather, diehard Cubs fan. Uh, grow up, you think the Cubs are like one of the most important things in the world. For sure. And ah, uh, right by him. Yep. Man. Been seeing a little too much more of that the last couple games. Yeah. He's been so good the first few weeks. It's one of those trends that you have to follow, but in the back of your mind, you do ask, well, how long can this continue? Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's been a few stretches too where you've seen Morel just one way or the other, right? It's like that seesaw where it's just like, hey, you, you feel fully confident every time he's up to bat. And then yeah. you have other times where you're like, I don't think that he could throw, hit a 70 mile an hour fastball down the middle of the plate. And you wonder, like, is this sustainable what he's doing or is he just on one of those runners right now to start the season? It's one of those things. I mean, I have a graph here for all of our graph lovers in the world Let's on Morel's contact rate. Perfect. You can see it right here. It's pretty noticeable when you look at the different colors on left is his whiff rate in 2023 last season. On the right is his whiff rate so far in his first 50 plate appearance sample. A lot of blue on the right means not many whiffs, a lot of contact. His overall contact rate right now is around 85%. And you can see where the improvements are. Up in the zone, he's making more contact, not whiffing that much compared to 2023. So then the question becomes, how long can this continue? And yeah. people will point to, well, 50 plate appearance sample tends to be when uh, these types of metrics stabilize. But baseball is a sport played by humans that are continuously changing. Same with pitchers. And there's always adjustments. And the question is, in that sample, yes, you know, it was not fluky, but can he sustain this type of approach? But more so specifically, can he sustain adjusting the pitchers? And that's that's the ultimate question. But th this is something that's worth following for sure. Yeah, again, like, I, I mean, if he goes from like a 30, what was it, 33%, somewhere around there with uh, K rate last year down to like 27, I'll be happy. But oh my God, he, yeah. he's at like what 10% right now or 12%. It's yeah. crazy low. It's crazy. And he's, yeah. he's not swinging at poor pitches either yeah. at a high frequent rate. So it's those two combined play discipline improvements that make you think something crazy is going on. So I'm excited about it. Just again, the question is how long can this continue when he has to inevitably adapt against these different uh, adjustments? Yep, absolutely. Hey guys, if you're just joining us, it is now first pitch from Jordan Wicks to J, was it JP Crawford? JP Crawford. Yeah, there you go. And uh, on the hands. Okay. There you go. And if you are just joining us, so I've got I've got my drink in hand. I'm just having sips whenever. But if you do want to play along with us, every time the Cubs get a hit, as Wicks paints 92 on the inside for strike two. I love two. that, man. I love that. Every yeah, time the Cubs get a hit, we're sipping. Every time they K about it, we're get we're sipping, which might happen this very next pitch. Let's see. And uh, fouled back. And then every time the Cubs score two sips, and if the Cubs win, actually when the Cubs win, we are finishing our drink no matter where we're at in it. So there we go. Let's do this. Now you were you were talking about your your story with Grandpa. Oh my! Um, so let's go back. Coincid to that. Coincidentally, I can vividly trace back when I got hooked on the Cubs, like vividly, and let's do it. it was two thousand two. Okay, I was yeah. I had I was nine years old, ten years old. Uh, if my math is is correct, and they had just beat the Mariners in a series. Okay. So, ooh, wow, weird pitch. And that so was, for, that was a good one for me. It was wow. They just beat the Mariners. They just won. The Mariners just won like 110 games. They were like the team of that uh, last few years. And my young self thought, oh my god, the Cubs are good. Sammy Sosa is hitting bombs in Safeco. I'm thinking the Cubs are on the rise as a nine, ten year old. And it ever since then, it just hooked me to this team. I watched literally every game um, up until right what, now, this very second what year would that have been? That was 2002, 2002. So they lost 95 games that year, but it was during the summer and I, I, I was delusional as a nine-year-old. And so I still watched every game thinking they were good. So you also started your Cubs Phantom after Sosa's 98 chase. Yeah. So I'm 31 years old. So I remember Sosa, but I was, you have to remember I was five years old. So I didn't understand the, uh, there's your boy Nico. 
I didn't understand the complexities of like how significant that rise was. I just thought it was normal because I was just starting to understand what sports were. So uh, Sammy was my guy though. I got into Sammy. I got into the Cubs partially because of Sammy. Like Sammy hit a home run against the Mariners in 2020 in 2002. And that's what drew me because I thought Sammy was like the best player in the world. I mean, he basically was. He was. At that he was time. unreal. I, I remember literally, I mean, I vividly remember it was probably year four or five of my Cubs fandom. And I'm like walking to history class in high school. And I'm like, oh boy, oh boy. Stay in, stay in. Here we go. We're good. Bellinger's got that one. Okay. You're like still a second or two seconds ahead of me. So I need, you said I need to pause. So I'm going to pause really quick. Yeah. One, two, there we go. Pause. Yeah. We're good. Right, we're good. <laughs> it's um, my Wi Fi's fault. <laughs> you I mean, you almost gave me a heart attack. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop doing that. I think we're good now. Um, I remember it was like August going into September. He had somewhere around like 47, 48 home runs. And I was just yeah. like, all right, like <clears throat> he's got to hit X amount of home runs and X amount of games to be able to get to 60. Like I've, I've been a Cubs fan for a long time. I've never seen Sammy not hit 60 home runs. Like, you know, that, that's how so like, that's how much we were like just spoiled by Sammy Sosa. Oh, man. Uh, Phil Lawson says Billy Williams is my all time favorite. Oh. Hard not to be. Man, I heard all those stories from that era from my grandpa. Uh, Billy Williams seems like one of the nicest guys too. Still to this day, around spring training, talking to the guys, sharp as a nail. So I had a, one of my first interviews that I did when I started this show, it wasn't even when I was Cubs only. I don't know if you know, I started this as just like a general baseball uh, interview show and, and channel. And one of the first guys I had was, his name was Jason Cannon. And he wrote a book that's going to come out this year about Billy Williams and Willie McCovey. And that's apparently right. they grew up in the same town in Alabama and like have all of these parallels and they all start before they ever reach the major leagues. And it's, it's wild to think that both of those guys that are just, you know, top three players all time in their, in their organizations were like pretty much down the street from each other. Isn't that, you know, baseball is such a weird sport where you have small stories like that. It, yeah. That's, that's, that's incredible. I have to check that out. All right. So looking like we're going for back to back. Well, actually Bellinger got on, so it wasn't a one, two, three inning for Miller, but, Sure felt like it. It felt like, hey, there we go. That a boy. Have your oh, first look sip. Look at that change up. Look at that change up. And he didn't have it last we game. Gotta, we got to talk about that. Ugh. All right, everyone. Cheers. It's our first Cheers. sip of the night. There we go. All right, so what do we have here? Um, What is this? What you got? You got I'm another to, graph for us? I got all this all this Wix stuff on my computer. I just got to make sure I'm pulling up the right one. Yeah, let's see it. Uh, ba, ba, ba. where are we here while you're doing that i've got a little video of wicks from the last game i want to up i want to throw that up there because i mean he did not have his let me see if i can get that off comments sorry jake i gotta take your comment down there we go <clears throat> um i mean he did not have his change up last game and he shut down the dodgers you don't, I know. I don't That's, think you see one strikeout with the changeup. I I know. I'm gonna show something once I get this up. Okay, it's up, so you can screen share that when this video, beautiful highlight yeah. video, is done. I think the only changeup I've seen was the rocket off the bat of bets that Suzuki ended up getting. But Oof. I was not a fan of him getting taken out after Freddie. I don't care. Hundred pitches. Who cares? Give him one more batter. I was yeah, it's one of it's, it's one of those thresholds that is. I wish I understood it more, because yeah. they they did the same thing with Assad. Yeah, so I mean, if you look at this chart on the left, is his Dodgers outing against um, uh, against lefties? You know, he threw red four seams, orange sinkers, a flurry of yellow sliders. Typically on the right, which is right-handed batters, you would expect a ton of green changeups and basically yeah. little to no turquoise curves and yellow sliders it should be just basically all red and green but against the dodgers he threw almost equally amount of sliders and curveballs and so it's like stuff like that that makes you think oh this is a great development because 
when he does not have his change up at times, he needs another pitch type. And this slider curve is being used against lefties and righties. And he right now he has five pitch types as a, you know, basically a rookie, if you want to call him that. It's unbelievable that type of development he's had. So it gives me a lot of confidence going forward. I mean, that was the one thing that I, I can't remember where I was listening, but someone had brought up whether it was Boog and JD on a a broadcast or might have been heck, it might have been you guys. I, I I can't remember, but someone was talking about oh, that's hilarious. You see <laughs> the <at> that. <laughs> I see it. Bryce, I see it. Bryce Miller. All right, all right. Matthew all right. McConaughey. All right, all right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. They, I keep getting older. They stay the same age. <laughs> Ooh, um, no, I, I, I was thinking about just, you know, the, the thought of what happens when he doesn't have his change up. And we saw he still yeah. shut down one of the top offenses in major league baseball. And the only reason he gave up two runs was because he got taken out. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. They're just a uh, little, little aggressive here tonight. Yeah, jumping on those fastballs and just missing it too. Morrell, Dansby on those two pitches, and for Dansby, it's rare he, they get the fastball by him. So that's interesting. That had some good rising action on that one. It did. It did. Let's see what we got in the comments here. Yeah, we Ball should read some of these comments. Night. What's that? We should read some of these comments. I'm like ignoring yeah. all the comments. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I have a tendency to accidentally do that. We get so uh, caught up in watching the game and thinking about what to say next. I know. And forget to look at the comments. Cubs comment section. I came in for the graphs. Thank you, Cubs comment section. I appreciate that. That's the reinforcement I, I need in my life. Just missed that Man, one. Just missed that. Yep. I mean, that's pretty gutsy by Miller throwing three fastballs by Dansby like that. That's interesting. Shows he's got confidence in it. Yeah. And Dansby's one of those guys early on, too. Like, Morell and, and Hap and, and Nico and, and basically half the team not chasing at pitches. It's like a team wide thing. It's been so good to see. Ugh. I it's refreshing. I mean, it, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but like this team so far, the approach has reminded me so much of the 2008 Fukudome effect. Everyone. I feel that. Everyone that. is having good, solid at bats. I feel that. Yeah, that was like when Fukudome came over. First off, we had like no lefty batters. We felt like for years at the time. And then his approach was so calm. I remember too, like they were questioning, is this leaking off onto Aramis Ramirez's plate approach? It was, it was fun to watch. Ooh. Man, I hate baseball. I hate it. I hate <laughs> it. It's a stupid sport. That makes no sense. Remember um, the Jimmy Fallon baseball movie? Um, oh, what pitch. was that one called? Fever Pitch. Fever Pitch, yeah. I want to yep. say Perfect Pitch, but that's Pitch Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, hilar hilarious uh, joke, too, from Adam Devine, who was in Pitch Perfect. He's got a Netflix stand-up now. Yeah. And he talks about how he thought he was going to an audition for a baseball movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, I mean, Jimmy Fallon in that movie, right? He talks about like how baseball is the only thing fair in life. Like Michael Bush just hit a line drive and he, and it got caught, but like, he's going to probably hit a squibber that is going to go 20 miles off the bat. A hundred percent. And there's no doubt about that. No yeah. doubt about that. Let's see what we got. What do you think about Nico getting the day off with Hendricks on the mound yesterday on uh, Wednesday? I think he needed it, man. He just has looks a little, little peculiar at yeah. the dish. So I liked it. Get two days off. You got this brutal West Coast trip. So I, I didn't mind it. Hey, there we go. Get up. Oh, yeah. Am I still about a second ahead of you? You are. You are. Okay. You are. I'm going to just I, pause again. I feel One. like Apple TV is just intentionally messing with us. <laughs> it knows when I'm go. pausing and then it's pausing. <laughs> yeah. too. Out of way, Nico. That's good to see. I mean, he deserves some of those little weak base hits. You know, he's had a lot of hard hit balls that just haven't found grass. So that's good he, to see. It's, it's true. Kind of the uh, the same thing so far as um, Saya, uh, where it's like the hard hit balls have been on the ground just right at guys. Yeah, exactly. Talkman's looked great at the play too, in terms of just like calm approach, seeing pitches, like right there, that eighty three mile per hour slider down and in. It's just like not even flinching at that. 
so I got I got a good Mike Talkman story for you. Oh yeah. Um, I was at spring training, and I started getting like a little too confident. <laughs> Listen, you better be confident and not confident. So you got to pick your poison, pick that one. Well, I mean, just for some context, right? I started posting stuff on YouTube. It was getting shared like crazy. I was like starting to get a following on Twitter. Um, and then like a bunch of the Cubs media, including Freddie, who's the interpreter for Morel and for Canario and all these guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, he just missed that one. Yeah. Man, that's Freddie. Freddie like comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, I love your channel." I'm like, "Stop! No, you know who I what?" <laughs> like, I'm, that's cool. I'm start and I had a like quick conversation with Craig Council and Patrick Wisdom. Like, you know, that's so I've, I've got a little bit of some momentum going on behind me. And so Talkman is right here like this. He's on the ground just like this. Yeah, and he's waiting for the uh, the uh, BP thrower to come over and start throwing BP. Yeah. And he gets up and he puts his hat back on. And again, he's still in a crouch and I'm the only person around. Like literally there was no one else around. And I go, Mike, bro, the season hasn't even started yet. You're already tired. <laughs> and he just goes like this. He looks straight at me and goes, <laughs> it's like, sorry. Ouch. <laughs> My bad. That is a pretty overconfident thing to say. <laughs> you know what? You have to go through I those embarrassing moments sometimes. I mean, like, I thought about it in hindsight, and I was like, okay. I think about it every single Mike. day. <laughs> well, you don't say that to Mike Talkman. You don't say that to Ian Happ. You don't say that to Hector Neris, like the guys who are never smiling. You say that maybe, maybe to a guy like Rizzo, um, maybe. Like Alzali or, yeah. or Morel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like yeah. guys who can have some fun out there and don't really yeah. care. More lighthearted folks. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was a little too, uh, I mean, talk about seems like a very serious dude when he's given his interviews, very. when he's given his interviews, whether it be post game, he pauses so much in between question and answer. Like he really yeah. thinks about what he wants to say. So he's a pretty serious dude. Don't want to joke with people like that. And he didn't even want to be called the Palatine pounder for pounder. a long time. Like, yeah, I'm sure he didn't. He probably wanted to be yeah. called Mike Talkman, just Mike, maybe Michael yeah. <laughs> to be more professional and serious. Good question from uh, Cubs comment section here. What do you guys think happens when Wisdom comes back? Does Cooper get DFA'd? I don't think so. I think it's early. I mean, they you know, Cooper is kind of one of those low risk things anyway. But we'll see what happens with the sixty day IL stuff um, with Merriweather. Unless I missed it, I don't think he's on the sixty day IL yet. So that might open up a, a spot where you can bring Wisdom back up. But we'll see. It's a it's a it's a fringe decision. I don't think it's going to have a significant impact, although it could, but likely not to have a significant impact. I, uh, I mean, you know, it's it's thirteen at bats, but he's off to a pretty solid start. You know, he's got a home run or not a home run. Yeah, yeah, he does have a home run, a triple, double. You know, his OPS is crazy over thirteen hundred. Uh, yeah, got a was that ninety one miles per hour? Oh, you know what? That? We didn't we didn't sip when Nico got a hit. My bad. Well, we got yeah, we got we got to catch up. That. <laughs> sorry guys catch up with us um i mean cooper was solid last year for the marlins so i mean i i was kind of surprised that he didn't get a major league deal he had to settle for a minor league deal but i don't yeah, know i'm still i'm still not a master bony fan i'm i'm sorry and a lot of guys have come around to be a master bony fan i don't like his swing he's all right in the field i i just i know he hit 309 in the second half last year but like to me that's that's the guy who's got some options that goes back down. Yeah, I think that's fine too. I think I'd be surprised if he stays up the entire year anyway to begin with. So I'm I'm fine with that. Master Brony hasn't proven to be a significant contributor off the bench in a long lasting sample yet. So you can be optimistic about him, but like you said, he hasn't done it yet and we need to see it. Yeah. Hey, we got a friend of the show here, Rich okay. Beasterfield. Oh, uh, Rich is awesome. What's up, says, Rich? Talk, talk my request that Kyle gets banned from Cubs games. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> That's a rumor. That's a rumor. Oh, man. Up. Rich, what are you drinking tonight with us? Are you drinking tonight with us? I hope you are. You probably just got back from the backfield. Sun is setting yeah, in beautiful did. Arizona. Did. Uh, God, yikes. He's keeping that ball Ooh, up now. Hap, oh, what are we doing here? Whoa. What are we doing, Hap? I mean... That's actually a nice one. Yeah, I, I was... That's one way to play it. That's one way to play it. Look, looking <laughs> cool. 
Diet Mountain Dew. I like that. Hey, Rich, there we go, Rich. Rich, I don't know if we can do the caffeine at 7 p.m., man. That would keep me up all night. Pretty sensitive to that. Guys, if you haven't seen Rich's stuff, he lives in Arizona, so he's got all the the good stuff from Cubs backfields and spring training, but also when there's rehab assignments and everything, he's got a lot of stuff. So yeah. check him out. Rich, throw your uh your Twitter handle in the in the comments. People need to go check you out. Speaking of which, let's let's throw uh, Brennan's up here. There you go. There There's I Brennan's am. for you. I'm sure Brendan all of you are probably already following Brennan. Brendan two outs, out. nobody on. I mean, two. Sorry, two on, I, nobody I, out. I, See, I I'm already you. the the Cali squeeze is already getting to me. I'm I can tell. reversing I can things. Tell. <laughs> so we got uh, what do we have here? Yeah. So he's thrown. So Wix has thrown all six of his pitch types tonight. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. Kind of interesting. Ninety four yeah. right there. Two L. Now, now during a game, what what site are you living on? I usually use Baseball Savant. I just follow the the Illustrator uh, okay. update, so I see like the zone, the intent, what he's doing. So that's typically what I do. Nice. Change up. There we go. I like that. Did he swing? Oh, he did. All right, that was a big big call. In fact, for for the Fresno Fox station for a few years. Say that one more time. You were. I said Heidi Watney was a reporter for the Fresno Fox station. Oh, yeah? for so a few you know years. her? I don't know her personally. I was in uh -huh. high school at the time. Okay. Yeah. Rich is running the Pat Tillman run tomorrow. He needs the energy. There you go. Rich, that's the dumbest thing you could be doing right now is drinking <laughs> caffeine and Mountain Dew for a run. You, you know better than that. Come on now. Especially in that heat. Come on. <laughs> As I sip on my scotch over here. Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, well, I feel awful. Yikes. One, two, three in the first. Not so much here in the second. Mm. Mm. All right. <laughs> Time to get serious here. So they got... Cal Rally up, who's not having a good season so far. Seven, eight, nine. Need Lock it down. Here. Ooh, 93. 93 on the black. Huh. Okay. Is that his only home run so far this year? He's got two home runs. Batting 194. Strikes out a lot, so let's get that right here. Man, 83 mile per hour breaker on a one on a 01 count. I mean, he's trusting his breaking stuff, that's for sure. Yeah. There's there we go. Up. See, we're like perfectly in sync now. Yeah. Look at that. That I will say after that first major league start from him. Um, I really thought that that was going to be like a 30% type of pitch and he still has only thrown it like 12 to 15% of the time. Yeah. I was surprised by that too. That there we go. Let's go. Jordan. That's what we needed. That's yeah. What we needed. I thought it would be 30% as well, especially with, um, Miguel Amaya was calling his games and he was basically the, the personal catcher for Hendricks who was throwing 40% change up. So I thought, oh, yeah. maybe he's learning from Kyle, but never happened. Which is not a bad thing. He has confidence with his other fish ups. By the way, Jake just corrected me. He says T-Mobile Park. T-Mobile Park. I forgot that they changed it. Listen, I can't even name half these ballparks anymore. I don't know if I that's because I'm getting old or if they just keep changing them. The Giants one has changed more than... Uh, I think that one's time. Oracle, though. It is Oracle. It, it used is. to be uh, before at and It was like... It was Pat, Pac yeah. Bell. Pac Bell. That's what it was. Pac Bell. Yeah. yeah. Chase Field was Bank One Ballpark. The yeah. bomb. That was cool. Do you get too many uh, Padres or Dodgers games? Uh, I was at the eight nothing Cubs loss on Monday. Last no, Monday. you were. Yeah, I was. I was there. Oh no! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Come on, stay shallow. Stay shallow. Get a Do throw off Suzuki. Them? They should test him. Wow. There we go. Good throw, Sia. At a boy. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I was there. Eight nothing. Eight nothing. Uh. I had no At the idea sixth inning, I was, I got to admit, I was, uh, I was feeling good. I was feeling really yeah, good. Yeah, well, I inning. think we all were. 
<laughs> I got some red vines in the sixth inning, a beer. <laughs> I was feeling myself. I'm like, this is a great, great moment. I deserve this win. And then all hell broke loose. You know what the, the sad part about that is when they lost that game, I didn't leave when the game ended because the because of traffic. And Usher had to like tell me to leave. And you could tell her face was kind of sad because I had my Cubs jacket on. Cause so she knew I was not feeling the best. And it's just one of those moments, that misery, misery moment walking out. Uh yeah. I mean, my uh one of my family members was there. She's a very casual Padres fan, and she sent me a text with the photo of it before <laughs> the that. game started. And I was like, go Cubs. And she goes, go Padres. And neither one of us texted the rest of the night. I'm surprised I didn't get any crap from her. Yeah, well, you may never talk to her ever again. I'll, I'll say this. I have – my cousin is one of the worst when it comes to trash talk, and she's a Dodgers uh, fan. Oof. Listen. The worst. I lived in Los Angeles for a long time. They have very passionate fans. Very passionate fans. But they're, uh, bro, passion is one thing, but I haven't met too many Dodgers fans. And I, I just haven't met too many Dodgers fans that know what the hell is going on in the field. Yeah. Well, we had, we had one comment here that said he married a Dodger fan. Yeah. Kyle Lawson married a, a Los Angeles gal. See, Kyle and I have a lot in common because my wife is a Dodgers fan too. And I'll oh, tell yeah. her all. Oh yeah, I'll tell yeah. her all this to her face. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I was in LA. I lived uh, like downtown, and so I had a view of Dodger Stadium. So whenever they used to win, oh. the fireworks go off. I was so upset. So they like legitimately ruined my nights because of the fireworks. I'll tell you a story when we go to break here about a, a Dodgers fan experience. 95, dude. He, like, he's got a little bit more zip on the fastball than most people this think. This is what I want. love about Jordan. I, like, I hope he gets out of this right here because I'm not going to sound like an idiot, but like, he just buckles down under pressure, man. Oh, 94 oh, up man, and in? Same spot. God. Like, these, these attitudes from these pitchers, as a young guy like that, you just got to respect it. You just so mentally tough, man. And you saw him in that Dodgers game. I mean, he would come off the mound after a strikeout with yeah. that bulldog look. Get it. Oh, oh he ran, he threw his leg into that one. Did you see that? He buckled his knee right into it. Yeah, I mean, it might have hit him either, either Kill way. Me. Kill me. Interesting call. I want to see a replay on that one. Going slider. I mean, yeah, that's hitting. Who's catching that? I didn't, I didn't even see his catching. Is Yon behind the plate? Yeah, it's Yon. Man, I'm very ambitious with the slider. The change was looking good in the last few at bats. Yeah, I don't know why you don't go with that. And when, even when he was throwing them to uh, the Dodgers, I was surprised. He struck out Mookie with one of them, but. Mm. Yeah, so close know. to getting out of that, but just keep it at 1 0. Give me a fast one pitch out right here. Get back to the dugout. Yep. I had a very bad start to my live stream career on Wednesday with a 10 2 loss. I'm not Ugh. going to go down that road again. Ugh. Well, let's pray. Hey, we got 50 people in the room right now. 52. That's pretty cool. That's, that's, that's pretty, pretty awesome. Cool. Say what's up, guys? Say what's up if you joy. haven't already. A lot of comments from Cubs comment section, from Kyle Lawson, from Mac. Who else is here? Tell us what you're drinking. We got, I got a Cali squeeze. Brendan's got some scotch. I got some scotch. I may need more scotch if they don't get out of this inning. Uh, That's strike. There you go. Dude, his fastball looks good tonight, man. He's commanding the fastball it well. Does. It looks very good. I mean, the chain look good too. I, that's that's what I thought. I didn't throw to Urias. Gin that's and tonic was... from Rob German. I like it. Look at that. Gin and tonic. Have yourself a Friday run. Let's go. Another slider. Uh, what's up, Jeff? Hey, Coke Steven. Zero. Steven Miller Dunn. High life. Good to what's see up, you back Steven? again, Steven. What's Steven, up, Steven has won a couple autographs from me already. He's wow. He's off to a good 2024. That's a great Mod start. Modelo from Figgle. Hey, that's a foul tip. Yep. We got Coke Zero from WV Taco. Light beer from Miller. That's a crisp night. There we go. Finish him off. 
Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, make please. The oh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, I think we drink to that one. That's like a strikeout. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I hate the sport. <laughs> Oh, truly from shy guys five five seven. Oh my gosh, that it's every time, bro. It's every time. He's such a fascinating player. We can just leave it at that. Ugh. <laughs> hey, and and we're doing a bad job of keeping ourselves accountable to this drinking game because it was also a strikeout that we didn't drink to. All right, so well, we need to drink, do that. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. So here it is up on your screen. Here's the drinking game. Your drink of choice. First sip when the Cubs get a hit, or one sip when the Cubs get a hit, or if the Cubs K a batter. Two sips when the Cubs score, and uh, we're going to finish our drinks when they get a W here tonight. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to throw a curveball here. Ooh. There's a lot of people in the uh, in the room here. I'm going to I'm going to do a game I was not expecting to do. Give me one second. Okay. I was saving this for later in the season. Oof. And I'm, I'm going to give fast forwarding. If, if Jordan Wicks, this is a Jordan Wicks autograph right here. If Jordan Wicks goes and throws five innings, two runs or less tonight, then someone's getting this ball right That's here. Sick. All That's right. Sick. So here's, here's how we're going to do it. If you're in the chat right now, you got to take, get your phone out, take a screenshot really quick of this live. If you want to even do a selfie style and get yourself in there, post it on either Instagram or Twitter. You're not on Instagram, are you, Brennan? No, I'm a, I'm a Twitter only person. Okay, so ideally on Twitter, take a photo of where you're at right now, uh, of, sorry, of, of the, the live right now, and tag Brennan and myself. I'm Kyle at, sorry, what am I? Setup Man Pod, that's what I'm at. You know your handle? Yeah, I don't even know my handle. Set a man pod, yeah. and then Brendan is Cubs or Brendan underscore Cubs. Cubs. Post that photo. Tell people where you're at. Tell them to join. If you do that, the Cubs I'm gonna know because you tagged me. I'm gonna know because you tagged me. And if if Jordan Wicks throws at least five innings tonight, two runs or less, which really, like, let's be honest, that's a quality start these days, right? Yeah. These Not days, six, for sure. six and two or six and three. It's five and two of these days. So those are the ifs. I'm just pulling that out of my butt right now. We're going to go for that. So I, I know like Stephen it. Dunn has already won a couple. Maybe Stephen's going to win again. Who knows? And then I'll throw your name into a hat and we'll see who wins. I like it. So one more time, Jordan Wicks got to throw five innings, two runs or less. And you got to take a photo right now, tag at setup man pod and at Brennan underscore Cubs. Post that on Twitter. If you're only on Instagram, we'll take that at setup man pod. We got Bryce Miller hammering the hell out of the strike zone with four seasons yeah. in the mid nineties. That's what we're doing on our Friday night. Ah, oh, God help us. Shots of tequila when morale makes us panic. That's cool. going to happen more times tonight. Oh, yeah, come on, Jan. Yeah, his Man, he's got some, got some heat. This entire Mariner staff. It's good. It's good. That's, I mean, that tells you how bad their offense has been. <laughs> it's, that's right? a good point. Yeah. They're like bottom last five in all categories. Yeah. I feel like every one of their starters is 24, 25, 26, mid 90s. Good secondary and all command. It's like, where are they growing these guys on trees? Right. George Kirby is like the next, like, uh, Zach Grinky, I feel like, with that attitude. Logan Gilbert, uh, Gilbert, Bryce Miller, Brian Wu is injured, but he's good when he's healthy. Luis Castillo is that, you know, every fifth day ace. They got a solid staff. Jealous. Just like how the Orioles just breed position players that all look the exact same the exact same dude jackson holiday not to get too off cubs related over here but jackson holiday is going to be a, a, a guy like he just you, you, you can tell he's going to grow into that frame he's got that crazy bat speed that crazy athleticism good for the game i'm excited he's uh he's one of those guys 
that I, I don't really think you expect much power. And then he has sneaky power and he's not even that big yet. Come on. There Ooh. we go. Oh, wow. What a pick. That was a, play. Uh, that was a horseshit pick. He got lucky. Yeah, he did. What do you think? Does he have a Rawlings or? Let's see what he's got there. That looks like a. I've never seen That's that. That's a Mizuno. Correct. That's a Mizuno. That Mizuno. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm indifferent on Mizuno. They're so scarce. You can't really talk down on them. Rawlings, on the other hand, we can talk down on them. I got I got an A2000. So I'm. That a boy. That's what I'm talking about, A2000. That's why we're doing the show together. I can tell exactly. you're an A2000 guy. <laughs> I had one Rawlings glove and I hated it. Well, you knew. You, you sometimes you make mistakes and you grow up, and you did. I try. We My all try. Say otherwise. Well, you can <laughs> tell your wife that I said good job. <laughs> uh, he says, "Cubs." Oh wait, where did where to go? Cubs, what is this? Uh, comment section. Yeah. Mizuno. What is this? Two thousand eight. <laughs> I think Morel uh, uses a Mizuno unless he changed it. Well, there. Which, you know, he should issue. just. I know, so I'm saying, just switch on over to uh, what the Gold Glovers have. Hey, that's Attaboy. a big hit. Yeah, drink, have drink. yourself a sip. The boy say, uh, um, can we talk about the fact that Morel just like whiffs on line drives? Listen, you're the one who made the video about his glove work, so you're the one to blame. You're saying his glove is awesome; he can't throw. I never said his glove was awesome. I said his I'm glove wasn't the, wasn't like the question mark. I know, I'm I'm with you because you know, he grew up in the system as a shortstop, so you would think yeah. the glove would be the least of his problems. I, ooh, get ooh, up, come buddy. on, he he's not barreling up much this year so far. He's not. It's the hair. Get it might be. That. I it mean, that thing's that thing is rough. A little floppy, a little floppy. <laughs> I will say, uh, if you look at his, uh, everyone always talked about his batted ball uh, numbers last year, and you know it is what it is. But his max exit velocity was in the lower like fifteenth percentile. It's not typically what you see from sluggers. So yeah, make of that as you will. But like you and I both know his two strike approach last year. I, mean, I like Bellinger. I'm not. I think. Yeah. I think he's fine as is. It's just, it's just interesting because he he is a slugger, yet he has these weird non-slugger traits. I just it, think it's, like just, a, it's very yeah. fascinating. It, when when you look at the type of hitter he becomes, basically like an Ichiro with two strikes. I mean, uh -huh. you just like he goes from slugger, you know, Cody Bellinger of 2018, 2019. To now just trying to put the ball in play like an Ichiro, and and that's, you know, like I throw when I pitch, I throw overhand and underhand. If you try to get an average of my fastball, right, it's gonna be not not the blazing fifty nine miles an hour from up top, but you know, down below. Fifty nine is pretty good. Fifty nine is yeah. pretty good. Well, you know so what I'm throw, saying? Like you know, yeah. you, when you get an average of two completely different extremes, it, it's very skewed. Yeah, I, I I totally agree with you. I think with him and you know the whole ex woba and all all of that stuff, it is it is skewed. And then there's a degree of error in ex woba. It's not as if it was so outrageously different from his actual run production. So you gotta take some of that stuff with a grain of salt. And while it's in, information, you shouldn't ignore it, but you gotta understand the context with a lot of these numbers. Hey, a few shout outs here uh, for people that are tagging us on Twitter and entering themselves into the Jordan Wicks. Autograph contest, Mary Peterson. We got Gerard. We got Jake Hazen. Jake frequents our channel. I uh, had to take a screenshot. It says Cubs comment section because he's on his phone. Thanks for joining us and being super active in the comments. Appreciate that. Um, so far, that's it. So only only a few people want to earn a uh, a Jordan Wicks autograph. I guess you know. All right. Oh, the night is young. Yes, we'll see. I'm I'm confident with this offense that he's going to lock it down. I want to. Hey, the there bat. we go. Nice foul ball. Um, I just want to see him complete five. Yeah, he's going to need a quick inning here. Twenty pitches per inning. Yeah, fastball command looks good. It's just the secondary command is a little off. A little extra 
horizontal on that slider. That was a good pitch right there. That, 81. Was, that was nice. But still, like even if Julio is throwing those breaking pitches, Owen one he's throwing breaking pitches to end the changeup. It's just like it's such an interesting approach. Yeah. There's the changeup. There's the changeup. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't have baseball savant in front of me like you do. Uh it it feels like every time he's thrown the changeup, it's either been a chase or it's been off the plate and not a mistake. So it looks perfect. I'm looking at yeah. it right now. Fastball up and in. I mean, he's dialing the black. It's where, where you want it. Change there you up again. Go. I mean, that's just disgusting. That's why he's so good. So good. Hey, so cheers. good. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. I get distracted by his changeup over here. <laughs> Take a sip, everyone. That's so, part of the game here. Man. I mean, you have to wonder with, with Wix, of all the guys, all the pitching prospects we have, Cade Horton's the one with the best stuff. But over the years, recently with Wisniewski and now Ben Brown coming up. Oh, go foul. God. Yeah, like that's... Wick seems to be the guy that has the best chance of being that cost controllable six year mm -hmm. starting pitcher every fifth day with that diverse pitch repertoire. Well, and what's exciting about him, knock on wood, throw up a prayer, whatever you want to do to not jinx this. He just. He's not a guy that I worry about from a injury Tommy John kind of perspective. Oh, uh, why did you put that in the universe? No, I what said Tommy John. Come I'm on, not trying Tyler. to mark Pryor him over here, but I'm just saying it's a good delivery. Oh, we're gonna have Mark Pryor on this Friday night. I'm trying to enjoy my night. My God, you got a about Jordan Wicks injuries and Mark Pryor. You got a couple of drinks in me. I mean, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about whatever's coming through my mind here. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> That's I mean, dirty right there. I mean, the change is just working. Like, I'm no, you know, I'm not a catcher or a pitcher, but I feel as if you just keep throwing that change. Yeah. Four seam change, four seam change, four seam change. Looks good. Can we uh, talk about Kyle Hendricks for a second? That just oh, reminded I, I, me of I was, Kyle I was, Hendricks. I was waiting for Kyle Hendricks. Let's, yeah. let's wait to the break. Let's get out of this inning first before, because they start giving up runs. I got to talk about Kyle Hendricks in the process. I may log off. So let's be safe <laughs> for both of us. <laughs> Just going to ghost me like that. Turn it. Come on, dance me. One. Tough feed. Did he go? Oh, he got, oh, oh I don't know. Me Give me the I review. don't know. Hanniger is slow, huh? Slow, man. That was a slow turn as well. Tough feed. I get it, but a slow turn. Let's let's see. I, I mean, that know. was close. Oof. Yeah, he's safe. Yeah, he's safe. Good turn. Great turn. Good job, boys. That's a tough turn by Nico. That's it's, incredibly it's, tough. Because one of those plays where you have done that so many times and you're expecting a harder feed so you yeah. can get off with your other momentum. So he had to adjust right away. Okay. I, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. When I play second base, those were the toughest ones to turn. <laughs> there we go. Uh, hey, we're living in our glory days, aren't we? Always. Um, since we want to wait for Hendricks till the break. Can we just talk about like what a pleasant surprise Bush has been over at first base? Oh, Bush has been awesome. If, uh, there we go, Ian. Yeah. I mean, Bush has been what you expect. He's basically replicating his triple a line from discipline, power, all of it. It's been good, man. It's been, it's been really good. good. Um, all right. Is it Kyle time? It, it is Kyle time. Okay. Um, let's, let's, let's talk about this. I need to, let's remove some of this stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I was talking about it when I was on the live on Wednesday, and I was just so encouraged in that first and second. Even though he gave up two runs in the second inning, I was like, okay, like that was a combined hundred miles an hour off the bat from those three hits that made it two nothing. Like, yeah, he looked good, and yeah. and then it was just like mistake after mistake, and guys were hitting the sinker. He was still locating the changeup well, but like. I don't know. Going into the game, I was kind of like, I'm not really worried about Kyle. After the game, I'm worried about Kyle. Let's talk about Kyle. I'm going to share my screen over here. We're going to do some Let's live do graphs. You're going to tell me what graphs to make. This is going to be fun, I think. Okay. It, right. You you got removed from my backstage. Oh, I did? All right, we're going to do this now. There we go. See okay. This? Let's see it. Okay. Now, I can right. see. It doesn't look like a graph. It's fine. We're going to get there. So, okay. Kyle, if you were to expect 
the reason he's struggling, what would you say is his reason to struggle? Do you think his changeup Man. looks good or bad? Oh, I mean, his changeup looks good. Okay. So let's first off, let this load a second. We'll, we'll look at his changeup. Uh, but it, while this is loading, what do you think is the main reason for his recent downfall, if you want to call it that, in the first three starts? I, I think it's command. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you exactly what pitch, but I, I just feel like the stuff that I've been seeing get hit, especially – the other day when they were just peppering the right center field corner was off the sinker. Yeah. So if you look at this one second here, what is this code I'm looking at right now? Just, this just is like super second. top secret yeah. stuff. Should I stop sharing your screen? Just give me a second. <laughs> uh, okay. So hey, Cody Del Mendo's here. Says oh, I just up, joined Cody? for the. All right. This you see this? Crap. You see this? Yeah. This is his change up location. You see this over here? This is he is darting the legitimately the lower left portion of the zone. This, this is a lefty batters. This is exactly what you want to see. See this other location over here? This okay. is his cutting change up. See how it's leaky a little bit into the middle, especially this right here? Mm -hmm. Cutting change up, command, not good. Tailing change up lefties, very good. So huh. that's one reason, but at least the change up against uh, uh, lefties looks good. Then the question becomes well, what does his sinker look like, right? And his sinker, once I do this, you'll see it. Okay, sinker. Leaky in. Not not what you want to see. This is 20, okay. 2024. This is last this is last year. So you see how it's oh, more wow. in, right? Mm -hmm. So it's shifting a little bit, right? So he he's leaking way over in the center of the plate. You want to be more so in on the hands or right-handed batters. So Sinker command, not good. Cutting change of command, a little bit leaky. Velocity is still good, though. Forcing fastball actually looks pretty good. If you look at the forcing fastball, hopefully the Cubs aren't scoring runs, not missing it. So forcing fastball, this is what you're looking at over here. So a lot of up and in, which is, again, what you want to see, um, even though it's kind of skewed right here. But he's not leaking the forcing as much as he is leaking the sinker. Okay. So it's a matter of what you think is going to be his ultimate you know, decline that ends his career. But... From a stuff perspective, the changeup looks good for the most part. Besides, the cutting changeups a little leaky. Velocity is there. Four seam is there. It's just you have to add. You know, you got to bet whether you think his recent track record of twenty twenty three is enough to give you confidence with that command. That's that's how I think about it, at least. You saw his oh, you saw his post game conference. What he said? I saw he said he was pissed, but. Um, I'd have to look again. I just remember watching it and being like, this dude cares. And that's actually what I tweeted. It was like, this guy cares. And that's like, you tell me if I'm way off on this. Hmm. If Ben Brown keeps throwing the way that he is, if Jamison Tyone comes back, if Justin Seal comes back and Kyle just hasn't figured out what in the world's going on, I feel like Kyle's the kind of guy that like initiates and goes into Craig Council's office and says, like, just like Take do what out. you gotta do. Put me down. Do, put, yeah. Put me down. Well, like, yeah, put me put me on the IL or like whatever. Just but but do what you gotta do because I care more about this team than I do about going out there every five days. I think Kyle is always gonna be team first. I'd be I'll be honest, I'll be surprised if we get to that point in the next couple of months. At this rate with three starts, I guess it is not unrealistic, but Ben Brown still needs to showcase he can go longer than 50, 60 pitches to take that spot. Uh, Tyon is just getting back and he's ramping up. So his spot is not even uh, confidently secure for the next six weeks as well yep. until you start seeing it. So I, there's a lot of moving parts until we start making those decisions. I think so too. What in the world just happened to Morel? I'm not even following. Was I was it? talking. I was. Uh, did he hurt his wrist? This is like my worst nightmare is watching these guys hurt their wrist. It looked more like a zinger off the, like just jolting through the bat kind of thing. It didn't look like an, <clears throat> an injury. It looked more like a reaction from a ball at the end of the bat or something. Someone tell me what happened to Morel in the chat. Did he get like what? Do you, what do you do here? Broke his bat. Okay. Maybe oh, one of those. Okay. One of those zingers. Ooh. 95. Well, that swing does not give me any confidence whatsoever with that shaking of the wrist. Well, let's just come on. Hope it was a momentary thing. 
<clears throat> this is probably a zinger. One time I was yeah. in batting cages in, uh, in Cracker Jacks in Arizona. And uh, I was facing the heat, facing the 75 miles per hour when I was like, yeah, you that's, know, that's heat. That's heat when I was 12. It's kind of cold outside, even though it was Arizona. I swung and it hit the inside of my bat and it like shattered my uh, fingernail. So it's crazy. You were 12? I, mean, I was 12. I was distraught. It was not a good experience, but <laughs> that's what made me think of that. Did you play baseball like all through like starting in T-ball and everything? I started baseball when I was eight. Oh, hold on. Hey, that's a, come on. Yeah. That looked like, I, that looked like a gapper off the bat. That's what I thought too. But I started when I was eight years old. So I, I actually skipped T-ball, but from eight all the way through high school, I played. I did T-ball through eight. And then it was the first year of pitch like not pitch your own team. It was actually pitching. And I got hit 10 times in eight games. And I said, F this, I'm out. <laughs> you know, I was a tiny kid. That ball hurt. Yeah, and then, man. and then my parents put me in like tennis and everything. And they saw me in between like matches swinging no, the tennis racket like tennis. a baseball bat. And they were like, oh, yeah. do you want to go back to baseball? I was like, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> so you went back in high school? Went back at 12 years old. I oh, you're still young. You're still yeah. young, man. Ooh, that's not a good swing. So what did yeah, you, you play? Um, I was from 12 to like 15 years old, middle infield, mainly second base. How tall uh, are you? What's your, what's, give me your I'm, metrics. How much do you weigh? How tall are you? Wearing shoes or not wearing shoes. Oh, that's a Hey, that's a, that Bush. That was Bush, yeah. Get on two with two outs. God. Those are the best um, hits right there when you barrel up like that. That just gives oh, you yeah. the, the craziest dopamine rush. Oh, for sure. And God. he did that in the first at bat too. See, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Baseball's fair, yeah. right? You got it. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm five, nine and a half on a good day. So there you go. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with <laughs> yeah. you. If I have good posture, which, which my posture right now sucks, I'm leaning over. I'm like a good five ten. You know, you my hair is extra puffy and maybe five eleven. <laughs> You uh, Depends. so I I had to Google an image of Brendan Miller in order to uh, make oh, the boy, thumbnail. I'm, I'm for, scared it was going to come up. Promo. Do I do I show them this other photo that I found? Go for it, man. Well, I'm kind of scared what it's going to be. I'll, I'll, have, I'll, have some I'll bad do it during the the break. Um, was it was it during my time as a uh, as a podcaster? It might be. Nico? Come on, drop. No, man, the Seattle weather sucks. Come on, it now. does. You got to heat up that that environment. That ball is gone in July. Just saying, get some probably humidity, get that ball carrying. That's a home run in my book. Well, you were a middle infielder, right? All my life. So yeah. I uh, I played shortstop, and then towards the back end of high school, I flip flopped uh, shortstop, second base, shortstop, second base. So yeah, okay. middle infield all my life. I there was a small go, guy though. I didn't uh oh they that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. That's uh, I mean, look at that nerd. Look at that. Look at that. That's, nerd. Hey, but that's post 2016. That wasn't that's too long. Literally ago. right after they won the World Series. That yeah, was that's... a family photo. Uh what's not shown is my entire family to the to the right of me there. But <laughs> that is me. That is me. Well, it's when you Google image search Brendan Miller CHGO, that is what pops up, my friend. Well, we got to talk to Google about that one. got <laughs> to get that one out of there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so I started off as a second baseman and then uh, center field, left field, and a little bit of pitcher as well. Oh, you were all over the place. You are a yeah, utility a guy. A little bit. I can never play outfield. I just never got into it. I, I played a it. little bit in like Little League and everything, but... Once middle school hit, that was that was infield forever. I I hated the outfield. You know why I hated the outfield? It was such a lonely feeling because when you're a second baseman, okay, ball gets by you, you got a guy behind you. It's you know okay, yeah. it, it sucks, but like you're not going to see an inside the park home run after missing a ball for, as a second baseman. As an no. outfielder, I, Nolan Jones, that that was the from Morell's ball the other day at Wrigley Field. That was my biggest fear. It was oh. like. Okay, this ball gets by me, and this is this is collateral damage right here. I I get it, man. Your error is basically one run. My error is just one base hit. That's yeah. the difference. That's the difference. Yep. 
Yeah, outfield's tough. My I played outfield one game actually in high school. And the 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 field we played in, they try to replicate the green monster in Fenway. So I ran straight into the wall. And then after that, my coach is like, this kid cannot play left field. And then back to the <laughs> infield I go. <laughs> See, I I think it was Javier Baez who said it. And it was obvious because of the way that he played. But the the tough plays were my favorite plays. Oh, because you'd have to think about it. Well, you don't have to think about it, and no one expects you to make the play. Yeah, that's true. But no then problem. that play, that ball that's hit right at you, 99 hops, and you get like the last bad hop of those 99. Everyone's like, what the hell are you doing, bro? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's why I like the tough ones. <laughs> yeah. The, the grounders I hated the most were, especially when you're at shortstop, the the tailing middle velocity ground balls. I yep. hated those. They're yep. skipping all over the grass and dirt. They look easy from the dugout, but in reality, yeah. I hate those. Uh, update Stephen Dunn here. Sorry, we're talking so much that we're not even listening to the game. Uh, Council just said Morrell has a finger injury. He's playing through, and it made it hurt worse. So apparently this was already existing is what I'm gathering. Well, Bobby hurt his finger. Uh, nice three, one change up. Uh, that's so annoying. I hate, I hate, I hate every injury, hand injuries, wrist injuries. I got to imagine it's on the left hand. You would think, right? Uh, which one was he shaking off? It was his, I thought it was his right, but got a few it drinks. Weird to here. see him in the field with a finger hurting. Ah, which kind of gives you confidence. That's not a big deal, right? Yeah. You wonder though, when you see him, uh, zing it like he did, what, what is going yeah. on with it? Um, gentlemen, it's a pleasure. Morell hurt his finger on a swing in San Diego. Ron, Kuma did they go into more, did they go into more detail about that? Mr. Cub DB Swanson? What was it like, uh, an awkward swing did he like foul off? like what happens because i missed that yeah because i don't i don't recall anything yeah you remember back in the day when aramis ramirez just like every swing after a bit was he was hurting he, that hurt shoulder and it was oh, just like every God. time you're just like oh don't, don't, don't show that <laughs> dude i was talking to Corey about this a few months ago actually when he came back from dislocating that shoulder yeah i thought he was a gamer man he had to change his swing the two-hand follow-through rather yep. than one-hand follow-through i'm like wow i gained so much respect for aramis because of that i did too he had the groin thing for a while too he yeah had the I think there was a wrist thing in there. Ah, uh, come on, Jan. Christ. What was that? Really want to see him keep it at one. With the way that Bryce Miller looks tonight, one feels like a lot more. Did he swing at that? No, he did not. No, he didn't. Um, when he swung the bat, it was an awkward swing and pulled slash hyperextended his finger. I don't like the word hyperextended. Dude, how do you even do that? Just on the follow through? There That's we go. Uh, cheers to a strikeout and to a Michael Bush double because we skipped that one. Man, this game is stressing me out. I don't know why. I got bad feeling about this. I got a good feeling that Seattle's not going to score more than two this game. Well, you're more optimistic than me. I just got a bad feeling. Usually when I'm excited about a baseball game on like a weekend, it, it just ruins my weekend. That's a good Again, right there. We, uh, we are weird people to let us get oh, yeah. affected this much by baseball, but it, it's true. It is true. I mean, it's psychologically messed up, like fully admit that, but what are you going to do? Have, have you ever had, okay, well, let me ask you this. Yeah. After the 2016 World Series, yeah, did you feel as a fan any that they won? By the way, right? That they won. I, I don't remember. I I think I would have to. I, I believe they won that, that World Series, yeah. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> people forget that. Uh, did you did you uh, take take the games, take the losses, any differently, any lighter, or were you still just as hard on on the Cubs? 
I was thinking to give you a, a, a brief answer. I was thinking when they blew that game seven, that it would be very difficult. My biggest concern was that losing that game seven would ruin my love for the sport. That really mm -hmm. is what it was. I wow. thought, how am I supposed wow. to come back, come back from that? Um, and this is going on in like the ninth and 10th inning. And in yeah, mind. that was my biggest fear. It's like, I can't come back from this. Like I can't, I can't do this. So when they won that game, it was a relief because I'm like, oh, I could still watch baseball. So <laughs> it was kind of a weird way. Of course, you're like, you're ecstatic that they won and, you know, going nuts with your family and friends. And, you know, it was crazy. It was one of the best moments ever. But um, if they had lost that game, I, I honestly don't know if I could do it. Now, did I take the losses differently? I still get annoyed and frustrated, but I can't tell because I do react differently than I did when I was like 12, 13, 14. I can't tell if that's because I'm older or that's because they won the World Series. So it's, it's a difficult thing to tell. So I do take it maybe slightly less, mm. but it's still unhealthy. That's how okay. I would describe it. We haven't been asking the chat enough. So I'm going to ask you guys in the chat, how did you feel any like difference in the way that you approach Cubs games after winning the 2016 World Series? Did you... Like, did losses just brush off your shoulder? Did you still take them as hard? Uh, I want to know in the comments, but I definitely noticed a difference. I yeah. I found myself being like, all right, whatever. We just lost a tough one, but at least we won the 2016 World Series. <laughs> like, yeah. That's where, I, that's where I was at. Yeah. Like when they, um, yeah, it was weird. I, I, even in 2017, when they, when they, lost to the Dodgers like I remember when Justin Turner hit that walk off like I was like obviously upset but I it was a different feel let's put it that way I it, it's just a different feel it was definitely lighter than usual I remember just being like we don't even deserve to be in the NLCS right now in 2017 so like thank you for letting us yeah. get this far just icing on the cake at that point yeah uh, Cubs comment section says I did until about 2019. Now I want it just as bad again. Mr. Cub DB Swanson seven says in 2017, it was things weren't as stressful after that. I went right back to riding the ups and downs. Yeah. I ride the ups and downs too. I'll be lying if I, if I said it did not affect me. Like even when they blew that eight, nothing lead, like it ruined my next morning. I'm, I'm going to be honest with that, but yeah. I took it hard when I was a teenager, man. It was that was, is that fair? Ooh. <laughs> it was definitely not healthy when I was a yeah. young cat. Uh, that's, that's, oh, yeah. that's for sure. Not healthy. What What's like the one thing that you, when you think about it wasn't healthy, what's the one thing you did? Like the one moment that you're like, wow. If uh, I were to have like a camera on myself, then I would not be very proud of myself. Well, when, when, they blew 2003. Of course, uh, I stayed home from school for like three days. My mom let me because she like understood it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so my grandpa called me and basically had a talk with me, saying, "You, you can't let this affect you." So uh, that was there. We go. That, that was that great pitch. Cheers! Uh, I'm gonna have to get a new yeah. one after uh, this inning. I'm all out. You're all out. Oh, I'm boy. all out. Gotta get another one. Blows a bind for Steven. <laughs> so Mr. Cub DB Swanson, I gotta ask, are you a teenager? Are you in your 20s or 30s? How yeah. how how old are we here? Yeah. Provides context. 85 decibel monk says, drink up. Just did. Just did, man. I yeah. remember. Yeah, what's, your, what, yeah, what's yours? What's your so, like vivid? There was two there was two things, and Which I ones? think they both happened in game six and game seven of the 2003 NLCS. Um, uh, so I was in high school at the time and we were doing a hitting slash, uh, fielding clinic for little leaguers. Okay. And so, you know, it's 2003 and I've got like this giant portable TV that I've got next to me and I'm like trying to hide it from my coach because we're supposed to be doing volunteer work yep. and like I'm doing soft toss to these kids. One of them I remember vividly looked like Carlos Zambrano. I even told him that. He was, <laughs> like awesome. this kid was like seven years old. He's like, yeah, I've heard that before. I'm like, okay, great. Awesome. Me. Um, Mr. Cub says mid-20s. Yeah, that's about right. That's about and, right. 
And so everything's going great, right? They're up three, nothing. And I'm driving home now. I'm in my, what was that? It was a 2001 Chevy Silverado. And now I'm listening on the radio and I hear John Miller calling the game on the radio. And it's when Castillo hit the ball that Moises Alou went to go catch. And of course, Bartman got it instead. I've never heard his call for that and I never will, but that well, must have been a call. And I can just tell you like the, I've never felt FOMO in my life. Like I did at that moment, because I'm just like, what just happened? I have yeah. no idea what just happened, but it sounds dramatic and disgusting and horrible. And then I got home and I turn on the TV and the very next pitch, Derek Lee hits the double uh -huh. and then it all falls apart. And I, when Derek Lee hit the double, I threw a pen at my TV and yep. it like to this day has just this giant gash in it from, you know, it was one of the, it wasn't a plasma TV. It was one of those, you know, big glass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's pretty funny. And then the next day, you know, they lose and I'm just like viciously punching pillows in the bed and everything. And I hit the wall at one point. It didn't do dent anything, but my dad like came in and screamed at me and I was yeah, like, you don't I know had, what I'm going through. I had a few of those as well. <laughs> yeah. I had uh, one moment, like usually for me, my reactions are not like throwing stuff and getting like upset. Like my reactions are basically just like depression, but there was one where Antonio Alfonseca, hold on, big bitch. Oh God, that was the worst. Oh, call that. I know it's yeah, off the yeah, plate, oh. but I want him to call it. That strike sound sucks. Three walks. That's not what you want to see but, but, from Jordan. I mean, he's darting the zone. I'll show his uh, his his map after this, but he's he's all over the black. Yeah, he's uh, not missing by much. But yeah, Alfonseca walk off home run to the Cardinals in St. Louis. Renteria. Yeah. Renteria. I remember you, that one. Is that what it was? Yep. I was in Hawaii wow. and I, it ruined my day in Hawaii. Wow. I remember. Yep. <laughs> It's funny you remember that. I take a pillow, I throw it at my blinds, I shatter the blinds on accident. So I got I got a reprimanding for that one for sure. But that was like the only one where I actually threw something. Well, they were up like six runs in that game, if I remember. Yeah, that sounds about right. I don't yeah. remember the context, but I remember that. That was bad. Yeah, I, I had a friend that came to Hawaii with me and he was like, Why are we watching baseball while we're in Hawaii? And I'm like, Listen, you just <laughs> li you're just gonna have to deal with it. And then they blew that game and I like was inconsolable the rest of the day. Oh uh, man, we are sick people. You know, I know it's gross. does your wife know that? at what point does your wife realize, you know what? I got this sicko over here that I'm married to. <laughs> She's gotten the better, more controlled version of me. Yeah. This is a dangerous at bat. I know he's struck out, what, twice? Yeah, I've already poured more scotch in preparation. No way. He flew out to Bellinger in the first at bat. Yeah, he yeah, struck out in his, in his last at bat. Change up. Um, oh. oh. Come get it. Come get it, Cody. No. God dang. I mean, what was that? Does it heat her up and then? When right? you walk three guys in an inning, it's going to come back to haunt you. No doubt. Well, this is not shaping up well. What can you say? At this point, you just need to get that fifth inning, get a quick out, get back out in the fifth, maybe get two, two outs, bring in the pen. This pen is just getting taxed. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, listen, you look at, wicks this year the baseball savant numbers and everything i mean like he's striking out a lot more guys but i mean he hasn't he hasn't re oh my goodness just kill me dude. just end just end me well so who's up next inning let me see uh next inning you've got um talkman gomes Hap. All right. Well, third time through, maybe get leadoff guy on or second guy on. Mm. Eat on those fastballs. Get some action. Just got to get out of this first. It really is wild that <clears throat> that third time through, huh? Yep. That's where the damage comes, man. Uh, now he's losing the field for his breaking pitch. He's yeah. fatiguing. This is not good. We need a prayer. You don't want Smiley to start the fourth. 
That's going to mess up the entire weekend. And you got no off day on Monday. Yeah. Uh, he's what? Oh my up the way, velocity going down. He, this is it for him. He's fatiguing. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, Smiley's got to get going. They got to pump him up fast. He's got to be careful on this 3 0 pitch, though. Yep. Oh, boy. What are you going to do? You know, this is this is this is what it is. Your only saving grace is that this no team sure. doesn't hit well, so you can see the score staying the same. And <clears throat> at some point, what is what is Bryce Miller's pitch count at right now? It seems low. Uh, it, it feels like it. It feels low. I'm not sure what it is, but it feels 54. low. It's a 54. Yeah, so, right now. so what? About that? Uh, it's pretty low. Yeah, 54. So. I mean, you just got to wear him down. Get Bryce Miller throwing 25 pitches in the fifth. Get a run or two. I don't know. No, How much funny. do you know about the Mariners' bullpen? Nothing. Yeah, me either. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, let me take, take a quick look at them. All right. So what do you got? Smiley five six seven. Maybe get some quick outs. Maybe go four innings. Get to the eighth. Come yeah, back I mean, around Saturday morning. Have a good breakfast. Do you? Did Keegan get over to Seattle or is he on a on a flight? That's what I heard. I'm not sure if he's there yet. But if he's there, I could see Smiley going one or two and Keegan getting the rest. That'll be interesting. I'm not sure what Keegan's looked like in Iowa, but I was a little surprised they called him up. But I we'll think. See. I think it was like six innings, three runs. Um, had a couple back to back. I want to say that were scoreless outings. Okay, I'm just more curious so, about that velo and how he's stuff been, looks. He's been so weird. I mean, you know, last spring, right? He came in not throwing nearly as hard, and then this spring, all you heard was like he's not recovering as quickly. Like, Did you, you hear his uh, hear his interview last year about his weight? No. Oh man, yeah. So he slimmed up to start the year. Right. And then they sent him, I think, to Arizona for like the uh, whatever you want to call it, the whatever it is, forget the name of it. But he said he lost too much weight. And so he gained, in his words, 15 pounds in between like June and when he was back late summer. So he looks a little okay. beefier now. So, you know, maybe that's part of it, but you never know. Well, in 22, when he had that stellar year, he was thin. He was thin. I mean, when he came up, he was a bulky guy, and he thinned he out. He was, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So that would um, be interesting. Alessandro, can we say the coaching is failing with this rotation? What do you think? I, I don't think you can. I don't, I don't feel like you can. Do you? I mean, I think it depends what Alessandro is you know, Im implying. Uh, what would we want more? Do we want... Someone, I mean, Assad's performing well. Wix has looked good, even though tonight's a little off, but generally fine. I think it's been Shota okay. Is dominant. Shota looks great. He and Shota potentially may have tweaked his slider. His slider is moving 10 inches horizontally, you know, two times what you see from an average slider. So I don't know. I think the coaching staff has been fine. The coaching staff has been in place now for like four or five years, and they've promoted a lot of development. Yeah. I I mean you you could argue there've been some questionable decisions um but Absolutely. I don't think aside from that <clears throat> I don't think that I I feel like baseball is one of those sports that when you get promoted those first yeah. couple of years you need a lot of coaching for the transition and then after that like how much coaching really is going to happen that you haven't already experienced. I imagine almost none. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're developing a new pitch type. It's just a matter of getting to the point of consistency. It's the only sport we call the coach, the manager, every other sport, Basically, they're yeah. the coach. Ooh, 95, which pretty much is just like, Hey, don't screw this guy up. <laughs> right. Basically, like you're managing this person. Basically the Cubs have had some weird 
extreme declines of certain guys. Keegan Thompson's one of them. Jeremiah Estrada is definitely one of them. So Weird. there have been breakages, but that's the risk you accept when you do these extreme pitch experiments. Tyone in the first half last year. That was a disaster. I, it, it, I mean, Tommy Hadovy essentially said that the cutter – get down, ball. Not Excellent. the cutter. The uh, sweeper yeah. leaked into his curveball, and yep. it was difficult to differentiate mm-hmm. the two. That's the risk you take when you develop these guys or change things up. You know, it's a matter of opinion at that point, whether you like it or not. Yeah, I mean, you and I were having a conversation with this, not from a pitching perspective, but from like Nico, right? It's Mm -hmm. like you got a guy that could potentially be going to his first all-star game if he continues to play the way that he did in 2023. Gold Glover, um, what was he? Depending on which one you're looking at fan graphs or baseball reference somewhere in the 4.5 to five war, like does adding a little bit of pop to his swing where he goes from a seven thirty OPS to a seven sixty OPS really make him that more valuable of a player? Not really, but the downside as we're seeing it right now is that you mess with something that was already not broken. Like why are we going to fix something that's not broken? Yeah. It's it's one of those wow, non gomes. Speaking of broken, geez, killing me. Just fastball, 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 ruining my nights. <clears throat> Mid nineties fastballs. At least we got good company here, huh? That's true. That's by true. the way. Thank you, everyone who is in the chat right now. Stick with us. We want to endure this the rest of the night with you. It's a Friday. I know it's like ten p.m. in Chicago, but it's only oh, eight you can here. St- you can stay up. Oh, I, I love late night West Coast Cubs baseball. This is what I live for. This is like yeah. my happiest time. Man, this so, umpire is killing me. Ooh, this umpire deserves to be fired, as do most umpires. Anyway, yeah, you that's going to be a conversation. Let's we can talk <laughs> about robo umpires here in a second. But yeah, t- talk to me about what your thoughts are on the Nico thing. I mean, I know you've shared it in uh, on CHGO, but I want to hear it firsthand. There's there's two trends. One's good, one's bad. Typically, when you see a batter. Be more patient. That's a good thing. You want batters to do that. With Nico, he's doing that, and he's swinging and missing more. So it's it's difficult to figure out if this is a good thing or a bad thing. He's still making over eighty percent contact, but with his power profile, that's not good enough. He needs to be around 83, 84, 85. So it's to be determined. I. I will say when you see an offensive profile like his, you don't expect much of a power increase. So there, there is a risk there. Then again, Nico has been adjusting his entire career. And if this is what he thinks he needs to do, this is his judgment. And I also would expect that if it's not working, he will adjust back. So yeah. if it's not going to work, I don't think it's a long-term ruining of his career by any means. Yeah, I agree with you there. He's, he's a professional. He's going to adjust. Um, yeah. I'm not too worried about it, but I, I think when you look at this offense and the fact that they're ranked in the top 10 in a ton of categories and Nico isn't hitting Bellinger isn't hitting Talkman just started kind of catching a little bit of uh, a run here. You know, there, there's a lot of room for improvement, which is both exciting and also just like, yeah, thank you. Call that a ball. Thank you. I mean, he just it called is, that pitch a strike 30 seconds ago. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, I think there's two ways to look at that, right? It's like, Hey, there's a lot of room for improvement, but also like, Hey, what if Nico wasn't and whatever's going on with Bellinger, but what if those guys were hitting at the same time? That would yeah. be really exciting. Yeah. It's similar to what we're talking about with Tyon, right? Tyon came over as an average guy, valuable, deserved his 17 million per year. Nico's similar in that respect. And so with Tyon, his adjustments didn't work and made him worse. Ah, oh, man. On the edge, and with Nico is to be determined. But yep. Tyon did make adjustments towards August and September, and I expect Nico to do the same if this does not work out. Yep. By the way, uh, Ian Happ that is now a thirteen base. Look at that uh, thirteen game on base streak. I kind of so looked. When, at, his his April's have been solid. Yeah, man. 
So did you he, expect Ian Happ to turn out to be this player? No, I did not. <laughs> Neither I, did I. No. And why, why, <laughs> why, is, why is Apple TV showing this game? I don't want to see that. Um, Disgusting. No, I mean, I, I didn't at all. You look at his OPS those first couple of years that he was up, and I thought he was going to be high strikeout, high power, uh, another version of Schwarber, basically, with a yeah. little bit more athleticism. And, I mean, kudos to him for – changing his approach taking more walks but like honestly i i i would like to see more power from ian yeah i'm shocked he looks like this too because like you i expected more power especially early on in his career when he was like swinging and missing a ton and he was hitting some moonshots yeah. so for him to turn into an average to above average contact guy super disciplined 15 20 ish home runs per year it's it's something that was never in my imagination it's pretty wild. Um, Thank you, Cubs comments section. Yeah, I was I was going to say that was that was very yeah. nice. We'll do it more often. Oof. Well, I hate my life. Well, I'm going to give you a second to think about that because I need to refill my drink. So I also am not not liking this too much. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, commercial break for commercial both of break. We'll be right back. Sounds good. All right, I'm You're I'm ready. I'm I'm uh, stocked back. back up. I got a Palm Sway IPA now. So Ooh, look this at you. Good. What's the uh alcohol percentage in that one? You we got, it? Uh, it says it'll get you drunk, mother. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Time to pour myself another one. You ever, you ever see that Dave Chappelle where it was the oh, Samuel yeah. L. Jackson beer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to see that. 6.5. 6.5. 6 That's a pretty good one right there. Um, yeah. Th thank you, uh, Cubs comment section. Y'all should do this once a week. I mean, I have a lot. I'll tell you this. It's a lot more Oof. fun for me doing this with someone than, than by myself. I always feel like by myself, like I got to have all these talking points. I got to have like all these things prepared. You do a good, you do a good job though. Oh, thanks, it, man. It is difficult. You got that, uh, that like radio voice. We were talking about this. You went got a face like, for radio. <laughs> I was gonna say that. No, you, you got you got a very clean, scruffy look. But, <laughs> but you 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 know you went through the whole journalism broadcast. We we uh, both did. I did for two weeks. You oh, went that's longer. All uh, for me, it was two weeks, and I said, you know what? It's not for me. It's not going to work out for me. How funny. Um, I, I didn't know it was only two weeks. Two weeks. But I don't have the voice for it. But you have the voice for it, which is fine. I accept that. That's why I, mean, I, that's why I distract with my graphs. I, I think we're all our worst critics when it comes to how we look and how we sound on camera. Because like when I listen to my voice on camera, I sound like this. Like That's what I sound like in my mind. So I don't think I have a good voice for it. But 
what I'm saying is you do a good job too, but it just, it, we're always like our worst critics when it comes to that. Yeah. I will say though, doing podcasts and doing all this now for a long time, I used to be deathly afraid of public speaking and this has helped me with public speaking. I, I do a lot of public speaking right. now and this has been one of the best things I've ever done personally, just being able to good. speak and communicate. So it's a good thing. That's why I envy you who can do it so well. God, what's with all these walks? Why Why are the Mariners not chasing anything is what I want to know. They're just trying to ruin our lives. That's what it yeah, is. It's working. Oh, yeah. My, you know, my biggest fear coming into the night, Brennan, was are the Mariners due? Well, they certainly look to be due. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Let's, let's talk about something else. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Because I need to get my mind off this game oh, right now. Oh, we got a pop up here. Listen, you have to re recalibrate your expectations. This, this is this is what I'm thinking right now. We're we're losing this game. This game is done. So I, at this point in the game, it's not that I don't think they can come back. It's that I have to mentally prep myself for a loss right now. So I have to accelerate the process for me. So right now the game they lost the game. It's over for me. So now I'm thinking, okay, protect the pen. Smiley, go two, three, four innings. Yeah. Wake up tomorrow. Have a great morning. Relax, get a massage, come back, win tomorrow's game, deep outing from the staff, from the starting pitching staff in the bullpen, and just get to Arizona. That's what I'm thinking right now. This game's over to me. You got to accept that. Is the massage for you or for the team? It should be for me, honestly. I need a massage, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I never answered your question. You asked me about my wife. Does she know that she's living with a son? Oh, yeah. What about yeah. that? <laughs> I forgot. Um, I think they gave three runs when I asked that question. So. I mean, literally, dude. The, the Mariners aren't chasing anything. Maybe That's, they're uh, they're they got the cameras up in the in somewhere in the stands. They're cheating. You hear some trash cans over there. These last these last what four or five walks now have just know, been. They they're pitch. all pitches that are right there, and they're just not chasing them. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So what happened with your wife? So so you know, she knows you're crazy now, right? I if if we're gonna do like let's put all this on a scale, right? Okay. If we're going to put my Cubs insanity Ooh. on a scale, there we go. Got him. Easy, Nico. Nice. Don't hurt that wrist. If we're going to cool. put my Cubs insanity on a scale of 1 to 100, um, from the time I was 15 to the time I was 21, okay. uh, I'm like a 150 out of 100. You You're know, like 150 out of 100. Okay. Yeah, Got like it. I was off the charts. Just it would ruin my day. It would ruin my if there was an off day. It would ruin a couple days for me. Um, obsessed, yeah. you know, all the things. Um, then I would say, like, when I had bigger issues in life, like being in debt and having to figure out how to make my own money, and I was now an entrepreneur. I realized like, hey, there's some bigger issues in life that are you grew in my up, got older. That, I, that I had to take care of. So yeah, I mean, now is more at like, you know, an 80 out of 100, right? Okay. And then so they won the, won the World Series. You know, I'm diehard that year, but because everything went well, I didn't feel too insane. I just felt happy. Um, yeah. And uh, I would say from 2017 to 2019, I was probably like barely even mad when they lost. Like that's unless, a healthy place to be. It was healthy. That's, um, that's good personal development. Good job. Yeah. And then, and then I got married. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but seriously, like my wife is a baseball fan. The very first date we ever had, um, I asked her like, what do you like to do in your free time? And she's like, I'm a Dodgers fan. I love watching baseball. I'm like, marry me now. Um, uh, not a huge fan of the there. Dodgers thing, but she told me she loved watching baseball. And that's cool. Um, fun story. I was actually getting ready to move back to Arizona. I had bought a house there. It was going through renovations. And then um, I met her and we went on one date. And I was like, yeah, I might be moving back to Arizona. And she's like, she shut down. She's like, okay, well, I, kind of like what you're mentally doing right now in this game, like preparing for a loss. <laughs> she was preparing for a loss by the end of that date. Okay. And I was like, well, I don't have to move back. 
<laughs> and and sure enough, like you know, a few few dates later, you know, we're we're official, and you know, I mean, it was just we got married literally a year from our first date. So you just knew right away. Knew right away. Yeah, I mean, oh, that's cool, man. I was I was thirty three, thirty four when I met yeah. her. She was thirty eight. So we both had been through all the stuff. We knew what yeah. we were looking for, so we knew. Um, but it was funny. I, I share all that just to say, like, sh with her being as big of a a baseball fan, not like from a nerdy perspective, but just like loving the game. Um, it just kind of allowed me to get back into that mode of like, hey, let's watch baseball. And the more I watched, the more I got back into it. And now I'm kind of back on like, I would say I'm in like the 80 to 90 range right now. Um, so in, in a weird twist, you getting married made you more Cubs insane. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I was not expecting yeah. that answer. I yeah. was expecting the complete opposite. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Oh um, and and it was funny because opening day this year, yeah. our friends invited us to Morro Bay, and they were like, "We got the Airbnb. We're taking care of everything." And I was like, "How do I say no to that? Like, that's perfect." But it's opening day, so we got there in the ninth inning. And I've been watching the game the entire time, you know, on my phone as we drove up yeah. and, and in the ninth inning, of course, Jankowski hits the, hits the home run and then they lose in the 10th inning. And I got quiet for like three minutes and I look over at my wife in front of my friends who are not baseball fans. And I was like, Hey, I'm taking this pretty well. And she's like, yeah, you are. And our friends were like, you call this taking this well? <laughs> and I was like, you don't get it. You don't you get have it. No idea. That's what people don't understand is like when they don't grow up in yeah. like sport families and have like sport fan friends, it's so foreign to them that we react this way. Get through. What is that? Oh. Is that not illegal? It's not because he was on the left side of the base. Dumb. That's my concern, if I'm being honest right now, is that, you know, Cody Bellinger last year, because of that approach, was just able to get a bunch of hits to the left side. Yeah. Now with two strikes, are they gonna are they gonna start playing him just exactly like what you saw right now? And now he's not gonna be as quote unquote lucky. Yeah. The the benefit about Bellinger, man, this finger thing is scaring me, man. He's doing it again. Look at him. You see that? The little I, I didn't actually. I'm. All right. Is it a one, a one brain. count for you? A one count. He was very, very subtle. I'm not even washing his at bat. I'm just washing his hand. I don't care what the hell happens in his at bat. Washing that hand. So it's his top hand. Let's see it. How's the top hand? What's he going to do? Okay. Not focusing on it. Okay. We're good. We're good. He's not doing good. anything. I like that. That makes me feel good. I'll tell you what, though. Bryce Miller is throwing. Fastballs down the middle that are rising to the top and we're all yep. just barely missing them. Well, yeah, not good. No, 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 no don't good. call it. Oh God. I mean, it was a strike, but I mean, Oh, it, bus, but he doesn't deserve it, it. Yeah. What were we talking about? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, but Mr. Cub Dawson seven DB Swanson seven, I should say, uh, says finally someone speaking my language well he was saying he's in his mid-20s so he's got maybe yeah. a few more years where maybe uh maybe he starts to relax a little bit but yeah it's all relative i'm this, not relaxing right now though i can tell you i'm that. not this is I mean, really at, pissing me off at, at this pace miller's going seven maybe even eight innings yeah all right, how's that hand? Is he gonna is he gonna move it? Let's see. Nothing there. Okay. Um let me ask you this. Yeah. Pirates and brewers. What the hell is going yeah. on there? I have no idea. It's so early. I know pirates have like an ascending system. Milwaukee is just always that devil team, it feels like, but I I tend to like start paying attention to the rest of the division like around mid May. Cause this is like still so weird, you know, everything's so weird right now. Yeah. I, I mean, the pirates got off to a hot start last year and then still ended up being pretty yeah. miserable the rest of the year. Yeah. But you know, I mean, with skeins being ready to come up probably this year, Yeah, he's dirty. The, the rowdy Telez signing was low key 
like, hey, I, I would have taken him. 3.2 million, I think, is what he signed for. Yeah, he's got, you know, he performs well against righties, too. Yeah. So he, they have that going for him. I mean, Jackson Churio kind of scares me, I'm not going to lie. 20 year old yep. with that type of athleticism. So it's one of those yep. wild cards. But we'll see where they are in, in, in six weeks. That's kind of my barometer. I, I just assumed with no Woodruff and no uh, Burns, Burns. Yeah. that it was just not. And that's what I assume too. Yeah, and then they, you know, no more. No, no, no. Okay. No, yeah, I'm good. like, that was, that was just it's just, these wrists. You can tell where my brain's at tonight. I'm just hoping everyone's staying healthy. <laughs> you just, you just want to go ahead and forfeit now so that everyone stays healthy. <laughs> Honestly, I would, I would quit the game right now if I were the Cubs. Hundred <laughs> percent. See, I'm, I'm still hopeful. We gotta talk a about this. After, after, so are you, you are you talk? genuinely are you genuinely hopeful right now? Like, I'm genuinely think, hopeful. You, do I, you I think, am. Do you think they have a chance? I I think if Swanson make gets on base here, we have a chance. Easy with the heel. Oh no I no hate. no! You say the replay. Look at the replay. Hey, stay in stay in the mound. Let's see. Come on, Apple. What are we doing here? Slow mowing on the field uh, i think he was out yeah he's out yeah he's out i hate i i hate the way dansby runs through first base because he's bruised his heel so many times and he like runs straight on his heel it's yeah. like man help me out here don't give me that anxiety run through the bag a little bit more does he not wear like insoles or like what i mean his shoes suck i've worn those nike shoes i'm surprised he reps nike honestly nike makes objectively like the low the low top shoes are the worst cleats in in the game. The high tops are fine. So low, the low tops. Were you the happiest man in the world when Dansby Swanson made a YouTube channel? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> he, he put up a video last night for twenty minutes. I don't know if you've seen it yet. I it's didn't. just no like um, no talking. It's just twenty minutes of a camera in the dugout in the camera well, videoing Dansby's opening day at Wrigley Field. It's just it's it's phenomenal content. I got I got a notified of that one, but I did not watch it. Oh, so he's he's great. what just hanging out? Like just hanging he out. He's mic'd up. He's just like they have him in the fields, you know, in between pitches. He's like telling guys where to go. He's fist bumping every at bat. It's like very good content. That's awesome. Yeah, you got to watch it. That's really awesome. But dude, I just love like I love shortstops. I love infielders. Like I I used to when I was young, like younger growing up, I used to just watch. Nomar Garcia Parra, you know, Derek Jeter. I loved watching those guys play. So, you know, whether it be Dansby or someone else on the Cubs who play shortstop, like I'm always going to like those guys. And especially Dansby because he's so good. I mean, he's just so crisp with everything he does. I, I think about this all the time. And part of me just wonders, like, is it because I was a kid or is it because these guys were really that good, but like, I feel like today's superstars, again, if we're to put on a scale, today's superstars are like a seven out of 10 and our like growing up period was like a 10 out of 10. Speaking it of felt, which, it felt, right it, there. It felt bigger, right? So much bigger. Yeah. It I was a Cubs weird. fan, but Griffey was my favorite player. If yeah. I'm being completely honest, dude, and I was like, I was a Cubs fan, and Nomar was my guy. When the Cubs right. traded for Nomar, I like almost passed out. I was so happy. <laughs> and then he did nothing with us. <laughs> oh, and talk about trauma when he tore oh. his groin in St. Louis. I basically oh. tore my own groin. That was the worst. Uh. And then he ended up playing for the Dodgers and had like a legit season yeah. before he retired. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Oof. Uh, but yeah, back to our. Back to our original point, though. Yeah, you you genuinely think they have a chance of winning this game? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I Not, see, that's well, the, that's let's, a let's see. What, you and I. What does Apple TV say the probability is of the Cubs winning? Uh, they got this weird probability stuff. Easy Dang guys, it. easy guys, easy guys. On. Oh, okay, Hap. That wasn't pretty, but he made it. He was looking at Dansby the whole time. Yeah, that was that was clean by Hap. Well done, well done. Um. I would say right now the Cubs have a 18% chance of winning this game. Cause, and you're happy um, about that? Am I happy about that? No. Not happy, but you're like optimistic about 18% chance. Listen, I mean, <laughs> you think about it. 
<laughs> uh, let's let's relate this to uh, opening baseball cards, right? Like if okay. you got a one in five chance of opening up a pack with a a game day used jersey, I'm feeling pretty good about getting one if I'm if I'm buying those off. No, you're a positive guy. You're a positive guy. Sometimes I, I need to be more like you. That's a good way of looking at it. 18% is like the death sentence to me. Yeah. I mean, it's not good, but I mean, when you think about it that way of one in five, like, Hey, you know, like Kyle Schorber has made a really good career out of going one for five. Yeah. You know what? It's a good way of thinking about it. We're going to catch hey, this ball over here. There we go. There we go. Dropped it. I can't remember who said it. Someone in the comments said smiley is actually doing well. And I, and I agree. It was Cubs comment section. He's had some good comments tonight. Yeah. Keep going, Cubs comment section. Well, it is his name. <laughs> Rich, love it. Oh, wait, where'd Rich go? There we go. So you're telling me there's a chance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. What was yeah. San Diego's chance of winning on Monday? Why do you have to ask that question? Nico. Come on, Nico. Oh, get with it. Bro, oh, 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 Michael. What just Bush. happened? I was already Michael. looking away from the camera. I did he one hop that? I, I I blacked out for a second. That was. I thought he made the play, so I like. I looked, thought he did I, too. I looked, I looked away. away. Yeah. What a play! We were just Nico. singing Michael Bush's praises. Oh, you got to catch the ball. that ball. You dropped oh, the ball. No. I mean, it was a difficult throw, but you got to catch that ball. By the way, I. Have had this game on mute because I cannot stand on Trail Willis's comment. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not listening to it either. I don't listen to any national broadcast. Not I can't a, do it. Not a fan. Not a fan. Man, great play by Nico, though. That was especially that tough hop. Yeah, needed a little bit more zip on the throw, but what can you do? You can only do so much off balanced. Yeah, he went. Oh, speaking of going, did you see the uh, Torkelson swing from Angel Hernandez? <laughs> yeah. That was. That's what I'm talking about with these umpires, man. Especially they're Angel garbage. Hernandez. They're garbage. So I mean, especially Angel what? Hernandez. You want robo umps? I don't want robo umps. Um, I I do really like the challenge system that's going on in the minor leagues. I want to keep seeing that. Okay. Um. I I just think the robo umps it might eventually get to that, but I don't want to see that extreme of a change. I would like a human behind the plate that yes. gets buzzed when the pitch is called a strike or not. And he just you know, he just relays the signal. Like let's let's use let's use this as an example. You feel bad about a 15% chance right now, right? Not good, right? Yeah. They miss 15% of calls per game on average. So that's a lot. It's, it's a lot, dude. A lot. So a lot. So and, and you like know what that's the problem actually... is, bro. Like every once in a while, you see someone. All these umpire grades, you know, they come out and you and you see them posted on Twitter and stuff, and you're like, yeah. "Who's that umpire?" You don't know them because they're good. That's that's the best. You only know the bad ones. Yeah, Angel Hernandez, CB CB Buckner, back in the day, Joe West. Joe West, Ugh. he was garbage, Ugh. awful. I I re uh, reposted from um, I don't remember who, but it was the Andre Dawson and Joe West um, heated battle. Do you remember? Had you ever seen that before? I I hadn't I seen, seen it. it. No, what is it? Let me see if I can look it up. We can watch okay. it during the commercial. So is uh, it like no. uh, him arguing with like? A strike three call. It was a, it was a strike three call. Yeah, here it is. Okay, that was fast. He got fast out. fingers over there typing. I, I all I got to do is press that Google machine and it, it gets me there. There you go. You can find pictures um, of me from when I was you know twenty yeah. years old. And you, can, <laughs> you can find those videos. <laughs> I can be resourceful when I want to be. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, it's it's playing an ad. So let me cue it up and then I'll. Cool. I'll so was this when he was on the Cubs or on the Expos? This is when he was on the Cubs. Okay. So. Oh, really? We're we're starting this. Okay, here we go. So, for some reason, this video starts with beer cans all over. 
beer yeah, cans all no. so someone's yeah, like okay, here we in, all right, all right. So, uh, this is like fresh, fresh to me share screen share screen let's do there we go all right can you see my screen i can all right all right what have we got here balls outside horrible call yep good reaction it just like andre dawson just blows a casket hey look joe west actually uh i mean he's still yeah he's not going crazy but, at first yeah I, he he doesn't have the the chin flopping around everywhere. <laughs> that was twenty years later. Yeah. All right, now now Joe's getting a little bit more animated as he usually does. Let's, let's see if we can. Oh I mean, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he starts bumping oh. him. I, I, I mean, that was that. that was that, that was a very uh, aggressive yeah. ejection call. Oh Dawson, man, Andre man. Dawson he, was ripped. Dude. He was Look intense. At Look at him. Yeah, I never saw him play. I never knew what his personality was like during uh, games. By the way, the Cardinals were up 6-3, and now it's 6-6, so that's oh, good. good news. Oh, this is a little bit of a silver lining. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here because you're going to see the real fun. There he goes. Oh, throw yes. the bats. Oh, yes. This part I've seen, I think. Yep, throw all he, the bats. Get he, them throws, all right. he throws at least like three to four sets of bats. I might have skipped by. The other you know one. how heavy that is, too? <laughs> Oh yeah, and there's oh, there's the beers. Rid there's Ridley's the beer. going nuts. Oh man, okay. That's, Have that's... you ever sat in the bleachers? One time, one time. I need. They're to fun. Do that. I'm not a bleacher guy though. I can't see the game that well. Oh, that was definitely low. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so there you go. All right, there you go. I've seen new Cubs footage, new Cubs history footage. I've never seen. Uh, Rich just asked me, uh, "Can't you have the radio audio play on Apple TV?" So. Rich, uh, technology is complicated. When I did the the one solo the other day, it was easier to play audio. Oh, you can. Thank yeah. you, Rich. Oh, my God. I just wasted seven innings of my life on the national broadcast. Oh, you're talking about uh, like Pat Hughes. Yeah. Pat's on, oh, yeah, we could have. I'm yeah, hearing you and Pat Hughes right now, my little earphone over here. There you go. Wow. Wait, where, you're saying you can actually click that on? Yeah, bottom hey. right. It's like a Spotify logo. If you click that, it will go to the local station. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Look Rick. at that, Rich. Rich I is he changing was lives. Sharing it like on our broadcast right now. No, I got the Hall of wow. Famer Pat Hughes in my ear. Good job, Ooh. Rich. Thank you, Rich. I knew we were friends for a reason. <laughs> And he also says Eric Backus is a really bad one too. Yes, he is. Ugh. Angel Hernandez is the worst, though. Let's be honest. The He's attitude, the, the attitude with Hernandez is just unbearable. Um, who sang the seventh inning stretch <laughs> and called out Angel it was Hernandez? That comedian, he looked, right? Yeah. yeah. I, was it, um, I see. I can see his face in my brain right now. I just don't know his name. I can't think of who it is. But what an honor to be ejected by an umpire right. sitting in the stretch. That's one of my dreams. I would love that. Oh, oh my God. That was dirty. Dude, he's throwing these like sinkers every now and then. It's got some some tail on that pitch. Steve McMichael says Rich, was it? Yeah, it was Steve McMichael. It was? Okay. Yeah. That's why I don't know who it is because I don't even know that name. You've seen it before. I'm sh I'm sure I've seen him. I don't. He was uh, the football him. player, Bears football player, not comedian. Oh, okay. He was in the news recently and everything. Just look him up. You've seen this guy. Let's see. Bill Bill Patterson says the Cubs did absolutely nothing to strengthen the rotation. They replaced Stroman with Shoda. That's it. This team is doomed because ownership doesn't want to act like the big market team they are. Let's. I kind of want to talk about that for a second. Let's talk about it. You get yeah. you get the you get the first go ahead at that. I think you're going to be on the same page as me because I watch CHGO, but I'm the... I'm I'm a. I mean, you you think about 2015 to 2016, right? Yeah. 2015, 
they exceeded expectations dramatically, right? Big time. We went into that season having no idea what was going to go on. We were going to be happy with 500. And all the experts were saying the Cubs are two years away from really, really competing. And they did the dang thing. And then going going into 2016, why does that feel like the first base runner in a very long time? Uh, Basically is to to me. Probably is, yes. And there there you go, 100 pitch mark. All right. And he's coming out. Guy is dominating. Thank you. Take him out. Do it. Um, so I don't know where they were at payroll wise at that time. You might know better than me, but I do know that at that point it made sense to break the bank. You go out and you get Jason Hayward. Of course, he didn't perform the way you expected to, but like, you know, that was the kind of move that you wanted to see over the offseason. And that's when, to me, you really go and break the bank. When the Cubs went into this offseason, right? They yep. they didn't know if Stroman was going to come back. They didn't know if Hendricks was going to come back. They didn't know if Bellinger was going to come back. And so there was a lot of what ifs. But because they got Hendricks and Bellinger back, put them right at the t- tax luxury threshold, you're still basically at an 83, 84 win team. And if you go and spend $25 million on Jordan Montgomery, he maybe makes you an 87, 88 win team and you can't get anything at the break. Yeah. And that's, that's where I'm at is just like, it doesn't feel like the right year to spend. Now, if they were to go and get like a Michael Lorenzen or like Clevenger or something like that for eight to 10 million or less, that would have made sense to me, but not going for it. I, it just doesn't feel like the right time yet. At some point, they're going to need cost effective talents and pre arbitration cost controllable guys. And until that happens, then this is probably where they're going to hover around that first tier of the luxury tax. Yeah. Uh, there's an understandable amount of, of frustration with ownership. I think to who said that to Bill's point. Despite the team not having that cost controllable talent, I think to Bill's point is he would prefer them to spend the extra 40 million to boost their win projection from 84, 85 upwards to 90. And the sacrifice there is starting the luxury tax cycle and then penalties. But you get yourself into a territory where if things do go wrong this season, then they still have a good chance of making the playoffs. But ownership's not going to act like that most ownership groups don't act like that regardless until the cubs are able to produce those pre-arbitration players they're likely not even going to be um, comfortable for a lot of fans around a 90 win total even if you get to that third tier of attacks so i understand the yanks i i share it too i share more of the yanks from some decisions that were just did not work out not you know the intention was right but it is a full spectrum issue from the front office the lack of player development for multiple years the reorganization of player development the ownerships unwillingness to go and start luxury tax cycles over the past 10 years but to your point when they spent they have a good reason to spend and it's because they're moving that win projection north of 95. so we got to get to that threshold where spending to the luxury tax gets you around 95. Yep. Yep. I agree. Yeah. And uh, Cubs comment section had a good point. Missing out on glass now was the only thing that really crushed me. Rotation that, was tough. This off season. that was tough. I, I, I think about that uh, a lot. And with glass now, the trade plus the extension from the Cubs perspective, they've never operated with this type of risk. I think that's where you could criticize Jed. When we look back at this, you know, three, four years from now, Jed has been more risk averse with long term contracts. So with Glass mm-hmm. now, he has the arm injury history, did never, never has gone over 120 or 130 innings. So to devote five years of around 130 ish million, I think it was, or 150 ish million, I think uh, that's crazy. It, it, it's something Jed wouldn't have never done, right? Yeah. So it may work out for Los Angeles, but hey, go, go, Nico. Easy, Nico. I think okay, for now me, we're up to like a 19%. Oh, you're Kyle feeling Gilles. good. <laughs> Look out, folks. <laughs> Kyle's feeling good at 19%. Uh, but I mean, I think it's really 18.8, but I'm rounding up. All right, we can round up. But like with glass, with glass now, I, I go back a little uh, further with uh, 
uh, Gossman. So like Gossman versus Stroman at the time. So Gossman, same annual average value for five years. They opted for Stroman, same annual average value for two years in the third year opt out. Jed wanted that short-term commitment, not the long-term commitment, but Gossman turned into that ace and actually hit above his projection. So I think yeah. those are the moves you can criticize. And Gossman would have been an unbelievable fit for this team right now. Even last year. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And he's, he's gotten off to a rough start this year. Um, he has, but you, Steven Dunn says putting this into the universe, the Mariners struggle heavily and deal Bryce. Miller Dude, I've been or, wanting or that. If, if they get George Kirby, I would be one of the happiest humans on this planet. So equally as relieving as the disappointment of glass now is that we did not trade for Shane Bieber. Thank God. I never wanted Bieber to begin with is not because I didn't think he was going to be good, but I was turned off by all of his injuries last season, shoulder injury. And then now the elbow injury aging guy. I never, I never was into that idea, especially as a main acquisition. 100%. I think that was just like the consolation prize because we had not got glass now. And yeah. the only, I don't even think that, yeah, we hadn't even signed Shota at that point. So it was just not like, yet. Hey, you got to get someone to replace yeah. Stroman. Um, but we have a comment here. Jed paid too much for Kyle and Tyone and smiley. Honestly, he may have, we'll see how it works out. Like, I think he did pay too much for smiley. We'll see how that even turns out. But when he signed a two year, down. get down ball. Oh, way to make that look difficult. Mike Talkman puts up good at bats. He does. You can't you can't deny that at all. Just Even if he approach. doesn't have a great stat line, it's a seven or eight pitch at bat almost every time. Just quiet, quiet approach. Soft in the box, under control. Yeah, you didn't have to slide for that one. No. Um, yeah, at the time... I was surprised. What was it? It was four years, 68 million for Tyone. Is that what uh, it was? something like that? Four years, 68 or four years, 71. No, he's yeah, I mean, confused somewhere in that area. Basically comes out. What is that? 17 per year, uh, 17 per year. Yeah. 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 I mean, for a guy who had been injured a lot and his best year basically was a 3.9 ERA. I thought that was a little yeah. intense. I think for that, the idea was what we saw this, Get Tyone the basis average pitcher, but the ceiling is higher with a new sweeper. Um, that was yeah. a risk they wanted to take. Yeah. Uh, but to your earlier point, it's a risk because you end up yep. maybe reverting. <laughs> so uh well, and and my thought was a lot like when they got Ted Lilly, right? Ted Lilly, yeah. I think, was coming off of like a 420 ERA, but he was in the AL East. And that's where I looked at Tyone. I was like, Hey, AL East going to the NL central, like might as well put a 3.5 on that all day long. And I'll take that. I liked it at the time. I really did. I thought it was a good signing. I thought it was a good risk. We knew the intent immediately during spring training with the, with the sweeper. I, I support all of that. It's a shame. It hasn't worked out. As long as he comes back and is the second half Tyone, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Honestly, if, if he's even just league average, like I'm fine yeah. with that. That's the cost of his contract. That's what they paid him for. But at some point, we need like high ceiling talent. We need an ace. We need steel and then some. So hopefully Kate Horton ends up being that guy. But other than Kate, there's no one on the radar that's going to fit that role. Jeez. Arias is killing me over here. Oh, he dropped it. Did he? He dropped it. No he way. Scored. All right, now we're up to twenty five percent. Now, no now, way. now I'm starting Are to kind of get back into he it. Dropped he dropped that? it. He dropped it. Why do I keep looking away as soon as first baseman? <laughs> as soon as the ball hits the first baseman's glove. Oh my gosh! Oh, he, oh. Ran, he ran in the yawn. It's that big catcher's ass, you know. Wow. My, well, there's a uh, ongoing joke in our household that Jan Gomes has <laughs> lied about his age. Oh, you think he's older? Well, he's he claims he's my age, 36. 
And I'm just like, no, no. He looks older than you for sure. That's what I mean. Listen, I got the gray in the beard, but I mean that. Can I see a question? Looks, that looks like a 39 year old man. When I agree. When did you start going gray? 25. Really? Yep. So gray beard and hair, or it was a gradual progression. The hair you can't see. I, I'm just happy to have hair. I don't want to lose it, but. You can't you see no the gray. gray in the hair as much, but yes, I remember seeing my first gray in my hair at 18, 19. Really? Which okay. which was behind my dad. My dad was uh his first gray was 15 years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my first gray in my beard was 25. Funny story. Wow. You'll love this story. Oh, Ian. Really quick, actually, I don't want to waste this. Um Ian Hap. In wins versus losses. There you go. Look at that. Well, there you go. Yeah. You go, we go. You, um, Ian, we, Ian. Never. Yeah, I mean, of, of course, you just about every guy probably doesn't do well in losses. But, I mean, when you talk about a leadoff guy, and I just had this gut feeling, so I looked it up before this game, and I was like, yep, there it is. How about you look that up? Using baseball reference? Reference, yeah. Baseball yeah. reference. Yep. Cool. Um. What was what was I just gonna tell? Uh, you? Gray hair, gray hair. Oh, you'll like the story. So, my first business that I owned was helping high school athletes get recruited to play in college. No, that's cool. I was making videos for high school athletes, and then eventually we started connecting them with college coaches. So I moved to Arizona, and the first you know we we make a bunch of videos for athletes but our big like thing that we sold was helping them get connected with college coaches and i swung and missed my first four sit downs with with parents and their athletes and i was like i think i look too young i think they don't trust me right and how old so were you at the time i was 25 25 you're a young cat yeah so i yeah. So I let my beard grow out a little shorter than this right here. Okay. My next meeting with Damian Easley and his son. No, I played against Damian Easley. That's funny. Did you really? His son, yeah. Played against his son. Uh, do you know the son's name? No. What he's got a few sons. Do you remember the high school he went to? Um, it was uh, O'Connor High School. Okay. I think I played him in a tournament. But yeah, I but remember seeing Damian Easley. I'm like, oh, it's Damian Easley. So I'm I so this, excited I, too because my yeah. my former employee Ryan Williams is actually on this right now. Oh, and that's he pretty worked, cool. He real recruits, real baby. recruits is the name of it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So, um, so I I met with Damien and his son's name was Nate. Nate played um, actually in the minors for a few years in the Padres organization, but Nate was a freshman when I met with Damien and and his son Nate, and sat down and he signed up and i was like it was the beard they 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 trust me now they think i look older was and it as then, I've, i only shaved it for one year um and that was when i was 31 and aside from that had the beard ever since has it been similarly as like gray as it is now no 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 like okay. hey did i call keegan thompson i called you it did. yeah it was a little, little bulkier too Oh, he has, oh, he's he has got a mustache. mustache. He's got a mustache. All right. We, got, we gained <laughs> some weight and we got a mustache. This is a new Keegan Thompson. There we go. 93. Okay. I want to see 95s out of him. Oh, you're being greedy now. Come on now. I mean, that's what he was in 22. Was I'm he just not? hoping he throws 93, 94. Yeah, he was. I think he was around there. I should look yeah. this up. Ooh. Um, all right. A little slow. Yeah. Action. So there you go. There, There's the story of the, the, the beard. When I first started getting grays was was just like very light. It was very unnoticeable. I was probably the only one that noticed. And now, you know, you I grow it out. This is this is finally trimmed right now. In about two weeks, you'll all you'll notice is gray because it'll be really? grown out. David 94. Ross had the same thing. Ninety four. That's a good sign. Yeah, Ross had the same thing. I remember that. Yeah. And then it just turned all gray. I'm starting to get some like little small grays in my sideburns and like right here. It's my time is coming. I know it is. It's uh, it's fine. It's it's really. I mean, I will say, ladies like the salt and pepper. You think so? My wife, my wife was like, so I I started doing a little bit of that um, touch of gray just for men. 
Yeah, I'm for sure going to be doing that stuff. No doubt about that. My wife was very much like, it's not going to get rid of the gray, right? <laughs> she likes the gray. Okay. Well, people like Anderson Cooper and that white white hair. So, you know, these their own. My, my dad was a silver fox from the time <laughs> he was 27 till the day he passed away. He had all of his hair and it was just all gray. And he got my mom. My mom, he was 44 when he met my mom. She was 25. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. Keegan's looking good. Keegan's looking good. 94. Sorry. We're getting, we're getting away from, uh, from baseball talk here. I've had too much scotch. Yeah. <laughs> Starting to feel it. <laughs> IPAs for me have been doing good. Oh, great bet. fastball, great slider, four pitches in. I'm back on the Keegan bandwagon. I mean, I got. He, I mean, he's commanding that four seam. A few pitches he threw it. What is it? Let's see. Steven says, "I'm hoping he kills this opportunity because I've been a fan since he hit McCutcheon on 2020 opening day. I don't even oh, remember that. Man, oh, you gotta look back at that. So I'll tell you. I'll tell you the quick little synopsis. So he throws at McCutcheon, and then he gets ejected. And Wait, it wasn't it wasn't 2020 opening day because uh, that was listen, Hendrix. That was the complete game Hendrix. It, that era is all blur. I think it was 2021. Okay. Um, okay. So he, you know, he gets ejected, and as he gets ejected, he's on the mound chewing gum, and he just goes and walks that, off. Okay, that's the uh, that's Cody's. The gift, that well, he, that's the gift that yeah, yeah they yeah okay got yeah, it. Yeah, so that's what that is. I always wonder where that one came from. Keegan Thompson Nine. ejected. You said McCutcheon? Uh, who knows? I think it was McCutcheon. I forget who it was. Let's see. But it, it's, yeah, here it's, it is. Uh, Tossed uh, by. Oh, oh, so McCutcheon was furious. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely intentional. <laughs> so Cubs up nine nothing. Oh, this is like the whole at bat. They're Yo, showing like look every good. pitch. Ninety four. Oh, oh yeah, there zone. we go. Good for you. Yeah, he looked he looked very good. He's you know in twenty twenty two. Let me share this. Yeah, share it. Uh, share screen ejection. Share play. So he had just right before this. Yeah, but someone oh, um, I forgot yeah, who he, in the Cubs. I forgot who in the Cubs got. Yeah, this is twenty twenty one. So they played Milwaukee opening day twenty twenty two. It was 22 and 23 and yeah. 20. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did they show his face? <laughs> yeah, Burns. What are you going to do? Get out of that yeah, dugout. Yeah. Get out of that <laughs> dugout. <laughs> so funny. Oh, my gosh. I've always wanted to be in one. <laughs> same. <laughs> I've always wanted to do it. Uh, same. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, the only time that I can think of, you know, your coaches just shut you down. I know. You know well, the you, problem is if you do it in high school, you're going to get like suspended or like even worse. Yeah. So that's the issue. We had one yeah. kid when I was playing high school. He, uh, he trucked the catcher, a home plate collision and like hit the hell out of him. <laughs> and, uh, the, the, the dugouts kind of like came out a little bit, but that was it. The coaches and umpires went berserk. But that was the closest I ever got. I was out of that dugout fast. Huge water seeds in my mouth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Going nuts. I was ready to go. <laughs> so you'll like this. Uh, Justin Wilson pitched in my division in high school. Really? So did yeah. you hit off him? No, but he was a year ahead of me. Okay. Um, and I mean, we were. So just to give you an oh. idea, my junior year. We were at one point ranked like fourth in the nation for you our guys team. You yeah, guys I legit. mean, like I was playing JV my junior year because. Well, I mean, yeah, you're yeah, I mean, yeah. it was every guy was either getting Division One. Oh yikes, Division One offers or were going like you know, like the starting nine. I think all went to college and played ball, man, which is wild. This guy's got good stuff. Yeah, he's got a weird release point. You see? Oh that? yikes. I don't like this guy. No. I mean, that see, was confidence uh, right there. Two fastballs, top of the zone, and then slider. Yeah, see, he's been fooled a little bit tonight. Even on the fastball base that he had, just a little bit delayed. And swings a before bit, that, yeah. just a little bit. A little off. 
if you remember the, the first series of the year, I mean, he didn't look good with the Rangers at the Rangers until like his last two at bats. Yeah. And he just looked so good during the spring too. Looks so so balanced. Um, yeah. So Justin Wilson. Damn. Hit a walk off home run to (laughs) win. Yeah. Hit a walk off home run to win the championship. Um, the, the league championship against our varsity team, um, (laughs) junior season. (laughs) And then he ends up pitching for the Cubs in the 2016 world series. And I'm just like, yeah, that guy dominated us. I remember that Ryan Williams over here. This is your buddy. (laughs) Yeah. Ryan, Ryan's the guy that that played for us, uh, or that, that worked for me. Um, and great friend of mine. I had a kid try to jump over me while I was blocking the plate and he kicked me in the head. Oh, I woke man. up in the hospital, but apparently it started a big brawl that I missed. Listen, was, Ryan, was you and I both school? know you would love to start a brawl. <laughs> this is high school. This happened, Ryan. If so, you should have TP his house. Must have been, Must have been. Uh, yeah. funny story about Ryan. Ryan manifested the Cody Bellinger signing. Oh yeah. Thank you, Ryan. So I appreciate that. My wife and I are in Arizona. You remember Bellinger signed at like 12, 15 midnight yeah, California man. time. I was sleeping and Cody Del Mendo texted me and buzzed my face. and I had to wake up and do a podcast. Well, I tried to call you too. I think I was on the show doing that when you were calling me. <laughs> Justin is also a good friend of, of ours. So he said that explains a lot, right? <laughs> he funny. goes, yeah, high school. So we go to spring training, you know that. And then. Yeah. Ryan, who is like one of my favorite people in the world, I've been telling my wife, you got to meet Ryan. And he texts us, or he texts me five minutes before Bellinger signs and goes, are you still in Arizona? I said, of course I am. And I'm completely inebriated. And and he was like, I'm coming to Arizona. I try to call him. He won't answer. Dang, that guy had good stuff. Yeah. He, he, I try to call him. He won't answer. Uh, he's like, Hey, I got, uh, we're actually driving right now. I got my, my, uh, girlfriend asleep in the passenger seat next to me. And I was like, okay, whatever. But like, this is the most amazing news I've ever heard in my life. Thank you. I can't wait to see you in Arizona. He goes, the only thing that can make this better is if the Cubs signed Cody Bellinger. He sent that at 12, 15 PM. The Cubs no. then tweeted out at 12 or Jeff Passon tweeted out 12, yeah. 16, one minute later that they had signed. Cody Bellinger well, th- and Thank yeah, you. that's, that's when I just went into a frenzy of like trying to call Ryan, trying to call Cody, trying to call you. Oh, you called Cody. Yeah. I called Cody. Cody. He, was answered. On the air. he answered. Cody oh. answered. I don't think I don't, I mean, again, I was, I was inebriated. We, my wife and I, for the first time in a long time, because you know, we had a one-year-old or we have a one-year-old right now. We haven't had yeah. drinks in a long time. This is like the first time we've acted like we're in our mid twenties in a long time. I'm just calling everyone that I know is going to be stoked. And Cody answers and I'm, and I don't think he knew like what was going on. (laughs) So did you break the news to him? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. But I just remember him being like, Hey, and I'm like, Hey, we got him. We got him. He's like, yeah, (laughs) I would expect you to be more excited. But I was also, he might even be here right now. I I was, I had, I had some drinks, so I, I may not, have remembered that correctly but i just remember him being like super cool about it and then the next day i was apologizing he's like nah it it's all good we we all had to do our thing that night <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good i gotta talk to cody about that one yeah uh it's one of those uh deals for the memories though man that yeah. john lester signing good times good times. i want to ask the chat did you guys wake up to the cody bellinger news or did you get notified and wake up at, you know, I mean, that was like two fifteen Chicago time. So yeah. where were you at? And by the way, Ryan is in Virginia. So it's midnight oh, over man. there. Thank you for Eesh. jumping on. He loves Ryan. you. That's a good buddy right there, man. Rich says, you told me you had a good time that night. Yes, I did. Rich. <laughs> it was a good time. Rich was down in Mountain Dews after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian says this game is rough. Yes, it is. That's why. Uh, Brian, you accept the loss in the fifth inning. People got to listen to me more often about this. If they win, great. It surprises you, but I'm already mentally moved on to tomorrow. Well, that's There's no I'm... injuries to move on. 
that's what I was talking about with like routine plays versus the hard ones, right? Like you, you don't expect to make the hard that's ones. That's right. That's right. I've been watching a lot of Cubs games in my life. I know how to psychologically trick myself at this point. Justin said you woke up to me and uh, he woke up to me and Ryan blowing up his phone. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I was drunk at a bar, <laughs> stumbled home and turned on uh, the homies. Oh, Brendan. That's cool. Thank Wait, you. There we, there we I go. I had just woke up. I don't, I hope to this day, I don't know if that podcast went well or not. I, I'm like traumatized to go back and listen. You guys got a ton of views on it. I know that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. The, the live chat was going nuts. The, the thing with that little background information is, uh, because it was so late, I was the only one who knew how to like record the audio and do the stream yard. So um, I was doing that and then like trying to lead and host a show, which is not my thing at all. It was, it was, it was, and I had just woken up like the, the phone buzzed my face off. So, uh, it was quite the adrenaline burst to deal with all that. Yeah. Cody says, Cody is here. He's there. He he's is. Ignoring, Cody. He's ignoring the drunk call. At probably, he probably just going in. straight to the touching Cody's, 94. Yeah. <laughs> Susan. Cody's probably like all depressed right now, trying to find like some yeah. uh, camaraderie. This is not the place, Cody. This is not the place. <laughs> I'm in a horrible <laughs> mood right now. Horrible mood. You have to admit it's easier going through the tough losses when, when you're doing what we're doing right now. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I had I mean, uh, like, go ahead. I had, I don't know if you remember this because 2018, but, um, at Jerry DePoto on TV right there. Yeah, it is. Um, 2018 Bryce Harper hit like, I think a walk off grand slam against the Cubs. I remember um, that. Anyway, walk off grand slam. And I, during that time, Corey Friedman, who I do the podcast with, um, we were doing two episodes a week, like every year. And so it was a late night game. I'm recording very late. And I got asked, I was stoked. I can't believe they even asked me to go on 670, the score radio. Nice. So after the game. So wow. I'm doing the podcast, you know, and I'm all upset that Bryce Harper just walked us off. It's late at night. I'm miserable. I'm at my work building. I had a long day going 670, the score after the Bryce Harper walk off grand slam and it did take away the sting. So I guess to your point, it, this does help in a weird way. So dude, Oof. how about Keegan right now? Dude, he looks good. Velo's looks there. Very good. He's throwing some sweepers, throwing some curveballs, throwing some cutters. He looks like a Fast, cop. Fastball up in the zone. I like it. He looks I like, like a, a cop. Lot. I mean, any, <laughs> any cop that's painting the black like that. Yeah. I'm happy. Um, I, I go walk Corey's dog, but left this up, missed the last three innings. Oh my God. Corey <laughs> owes you, Cody, a lot actually for the last week. Oh my God. Going in for him, walking his dog, Dexter, over there. How's Is Dexter? It really Dexter? Cody? Yeah, that's really Dexter. His girlfriend Riz named it off of uh, Dexter Fowler. Yeah. Of course. I got Rizzo yeah. sitting next to me over here. I tried to get him. Do you to really? Over. Get yeah. Rizzo on the screen. I tried. Rizzo. What kind of dog is he? Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's he's stretching. Give him a second. Uh, he's just, he's, he's Ryan just and Justin up. know what Rizzo looks like. Come on. Come here. Let's call Rizzo. Let's... Oh. Nice. Here's Rizzo. Oh, Rizzo. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up? <laughs> Say what's up. Yeah. What's up, he's, buddy? He's a 34-pound oh, he... Chihuahua mini pincher. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen him mix like that. Yeah. What he's, a guy. He's awesome. Okay. He was just what slumbering you, away. Now he, he's literally just trying to lay down. He is so yeah, tired. Yeah, let him, let him go <laughs> do his thing. He just, he just disturbed Rizzo. He's enjoying his night. Um, God dang. I was, I was about to tell a story. We were talking about something a little bit ago. We were talking Rizzo. about... Uh, I don't forget. I don't know. You have to remember so yourself, don't, man. Don't let Rizzo get in your NYC. Harper ball hit from you were you were talking about six seventy of the score. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Benteen. Okay, so yeah, here there was there was a tough loss last year. I can't remember what it was. It was like August of last year, and my wife and I, like my wife, can tell that I'm feeling it. Not happy. Yeah, yeah. And she goes, "Let's go for a bike ride or something." I was like, "Okay, fine." 
and like halfway through the bike ride, I go, I just feel like I need some sort of like therapy session. And I think the best way to do that is to start a podcast and just like vent to people about these losses. And when I started, you know, it, it ended up being about two months later that I started this. It wasn't for that reason, but recently, like a couple tough losses and talking about them afterward, I'm like, yeah, this feels healthy. This feels better. It does. Yeah. Sometimes though, you don't want to do it. <laughs> That's what I'll say. It can get tough, especially after some of those really bad losses. Um, but it does help. Like right now, like they're obviously hitting poorly. Like this is making it easier. But there have been many episodes that Corey and I have done where we just you had to get through it. it. Yeah. But in a weird way, some of those end up like lasting a long time, like well over an hour. And it does turn into a therapy session. Well, and you guys are going live, you said every Sunday this year, right? Yeah. I mean, like, um, you know, Corey and I have been doing this for like a long time now. We started in 2015. So what can you, tell, can you tell that story really quick? Because it took a one on one conversation with you and I for me to even know that story. Oh, with Corey? I mean, he's yeah, dude. I love Corey. Uh, we. I never wanted to do a podcast. I just never. I somehow got roped into this. Um, I would post on internet Cubs forums. There was one forum called pro sports daily posted on there. Yeah. Someone asked, Hey, do you want to do a podcast? I'm sure I'll do a podcast. Uh, I was in college at the time. I was bored, nothing else to do. And then Corey saw one of the blogs I had written at the time. because so I was blogging at the time too. And he just emailed me somehow. And he's like, Hey, I like your stuff. I think it would be a good fit. Can I come on your podcast? I had just recorded maybe 10 episodes. And I wasn't even like the person running that. I'm like, sure, like you can come on. And then at, th at that point, uh, the other guys I was doing it with just like bailed out and just became me and Corey. And then Corey in 2016 said, hey, let's scale this up. Let's do it twice a week. And let's just do it. And we had no intentions of getting an audience he like me was just ending college and wanted to do something that was fun and started getting an audience started doing it consistently never missed an episode for seven straight years for that's two amazing. For twice a week and that's not hey, one listen, episode you you were just out of college like i remember when i was in my early 20s i couldn't keep a schedule for shit so we're, we're talking that could, that, that's we're amazing. talking sundays we're talking you know that's wednesday amazing. or thursday after the series so um and i give Corey a lot of credit because he's the one that held that accountability at the time i would have easily stopped if it were not for Corey. like no doubt about it so um yeah that that's why i really appreciate you know him as as a person for that and then eventually you know i went through Grad school and Corey was working full time. We still kept with it. And then CHGO started up one day, contacted us, and it's a good fit, having fun, and just stuck with it. Ugh, Dansby. So that's kind of the, the story. But Dansby um, got on. I would have said that win probability went up to 25%. Yeah. Well, you're delusional. I'm a Cubs fan, aren't I? Yeah. Delusional <laughs> one. Um, uh, I mean that. So, so you enjoy rather than having your own, you enjoy now like doing it once a week and, and kind of having it off your, your shoulders to just, I like, do, man. Yeah. Like I really love the Cubs and baseball. I also have like, um, you know, a lot of other interests that are work related. So it takes up a lot of my time. So to have that just once a week and I can just kind of, um, you know, not manage like all the other stuff that comes with producing a podcast, as you know, it, it hel helps me a lot. I get to do what I want to do. And I like doing content with the other guys. Love Ryan. I love Cody and Luke and, and the rest of the crew there. So it's, it's like, it's a perfect situation for me. It seems like a great crew uh, so far. Corey and Luke are the only ones that I haven't met yet. Corey's a good guy. You got to meet Corey. Luke's a fun guy too. Corey's fun. He seemed, I mean, they both seem like fun guys, but, uh, you, you guys have a good time for sure. Um, yeah, we're hey. so we're in. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll say we're both like very, um, we're both from Buffalo Grove, Illinois. 
but we had never known each other. Our parents have mutual friends, but we never knew each other until he emailed me. It's a weird thing. It's like we oh, have fine. such a crossover in our like family growing up dynamics and friend circle that we never knew each other. It's just so weird. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we got a full count with one out and down three in the ninth. And at our peak, we were at about 53, 54 people. And pretty consistently, even after going down big, we've been at about 40 people now at 35. And I just want to thank everyone for making it this far with us. Thank you. And uh, especially as we went off on tangents, talking about life and not just baseball. Um, just want to thank everyone for, for being yeah. here. This was fun. This is really fun. I appreciate this. We'll do it again. Absolutely. Uh, this is funny. Brian says, resign David Ross to play in place. Of <laughs> Honestly, Yon. that'd be kind of fun. Not going to lie. Can we just like talk for a second about what it would be like to be David Ross right now? Well, he's getting paid like two, three million dollars right now. To... Oh, I think it's four. Get out. Attaboy okay. Bush. We got life. Bush. We, we got, got life. We got Bush. <laughs> I like it. Okay. I like it. Back Although Cody, so game. Cody said, Brendan and I are really similar, which I believe many people would not think. Honestly, we are. I keep telling people this. People think like I'm a stat nerd, data nerd. I swear to God, I'm not. Swear to God, I'm not. It just happens. That's what I do for baseball stuff. But I'm really not. So but no one believes what, that. What do you call yourself then? I don't know. I'm just like baseball fan. But that's how I talk about baseball. I look into like some of the number stuff. I'm not a nerd or data guy. Or anything okay but people don't believe me hey all i can say is uh we have life dude have come life on here. now kyle come on now don't let yourself do this 50 percent don't, don't let yourself 50, no, it's, it's, not, a, it's, not 50%. it's a coin flip right now Who it's not 50%. This game? <laughs> how many outs are there one out one out all right well you know get on base yeah uh. Yes. I hate those. I hate those batted balls because it gives you hope for a, a, a brief second. And then the camera or the director yep. like just takes a little bit too long to switch yep, yep, cameras. Yep. Just for a brief second, you kind of know it's going to be an out, but for a brief second, you have a little bit of hope. Mm. Weirdly similar, which I believe many people would not think. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think that. So how, okay. how are you guys weirdly similar? I want to know that. We're both crazy baseball fans, and we take well, this to heart too much. That. Yeah, but we're same age. There's a lot of similarities there. We approach fandom similarly. Okay. I, listen, if I if I didn't drop out of journalism school, I would be doing. I would be working for CSU full time. So, uh, I made you know that decision early on. Cody stuck with it. I did not. So, if CSU existed back then, I may have been doing this full time. Wait, did Cody go to journalism school? Yeah, he's a uh, journalism major. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So he stuck with it. I did not. He's full time. There you go. Justin says, "Here comes a twenty-three pitch at bat from Talk." Oh, Oof, ninety-eight down. The I mean, you know what's crazy about Mike Talkman's at bats? They're never like three o three one. It's always o o two o or he's o grinding or one two and then gets to three two. Yep. All right, here we go. Here we okay. go. 99 on the black. Taking a look to see if I've missed any things I want to throw up. Uh, we'll give a quick shout out to obvious shirts. Cause I nice. always love giving a shout out to obvious shirts. Uh, these guys are giving us a 15% off every single year or every single uh, game this year. Link is not in the description right now, but I'll add it a little bit later. I Get low. Thank you. All right. Um, or you can just go to obviousshirts.com and use setup man 15, the setup man 15 to get that 15% discount. Go do it, guys. Thank you, Joe Johnson. You're the man. Yeah, Joe's a good dude. Joe is awesome. That's the cool thing about doing this stuff. It's like you do meet a lot of cool people. You do. I, in a way, I kind of wish I lived in Chicago. I'm not going to lie. Uh, kill me. Damn. I got to tell you, a 4 2 final, it felt like another 10 to 2 game. That's the way this is baseball. This is our life. What time is the game tomorrow? That's a great question. Let's look uh, really tomorrow. Quick. Same time, 640. Uh, 640. It's going to be a brutal, brutal Saturday. Brutal Saturday. 
but if I remember correctly, it's their fifth starter. So we got a chance. I don't even care at this point. Just give me a win. Hannock. Yeah. Hannock one and one with 1142 ERA against Imanaga. I think we should have probably done that game. My, my de- <laughs> probably this is your fault. This is your fault. <laughs> my delusional self tells me that uh show does kind of do for a, a little bit of a letdown, but I'm not going to bring those vibes tonight, but that's just where I'm my not, brain is. I'm not feeling that I'm already down in the dumps, but I will, I will say it's a bummer that we aren't back in like the early two thousands when you could literally forecast 40 games out who was going to be pitching that game. Right? Now you can't even do it for two or three games out. So right? we didn't know. We there didn't was nothing know. like going to cubs.com in 2004 and, and going to all the probable pitchers. I love that. Yeah. Was really hey, nice. Brendan Miller. This was a lot of fun, man. Even though it's the, the final was not what we wanted. Um, first two game losing streak since the beginning of the year. Not a fan of that, but all right, we got, we got to do this again. Absolutely. I got to get this Julio off my TV over here. I'm pissed off. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. fun. Thanks for having me on. Honestly, this is this is fun. We'll do it again. Like this is Absolutely. uh it went by fast, didn't it? Went by really fast. Like three really hours. Fast. But that's pro- a good probably sign. because we had a few of these in our in our bellies too. So yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed this. It was a good time. And Cody says the good news is we're all gonna die. Yeah, that's right, anyway, Cody. So, yeah, that's know. right. I'm gonna put some bleach in this uh cup over here. You gotta drink your Ryan beer, will- by the way. Uh yes. Well, they didn't win, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, okay. Ryan Williams go. says new ace on the bump tomorrow. So uh, and Bryce, Brian says punching my pillow right now. Well, at least Easy it's not the Chris. 2003 game six and game seven. So there you Easy go. grind. Don't punch your pillow. You got a lot more losses in you. You got at least 80 we, more losses. We already have pillow. one hurt wrist from, or finger from Morel. We don't need another. Yeah. We got to get more information about that, but yeah. he should be okay. Rich loved having you here. Steven, Brian, Cody, Ryan, Justin, everyone. Uh, Tom, I'm, I can't even name everyone. Thank you for being here. Gerard, guys Gerard's awesome. my dude, Southern California dude. Native. All right, guys, let's, let's get a series win, win tomorrow, win Sunday, call it good. And we'll just say that I'm the jinx because this is now two live streams in a row that, uh, we've lost. This might so. be your last live stream ever. This is it for you. Shut them down, folks. <laughs> I bid you do have a good night, guys. Have a good weekend.